New York Yankee Baseball on 1460 WOKO. Albany is sponsored by Budweiser Beer, Champion Spark Plugs, Colonial Provisions, Makers of Yankee Franks, AC Delco, Emory Air Freight, Wendy's Hot and Juicy Hamburgers, Scalho's Tobacco Company, and Big Dom Submarines. We win a this is John Sterling, and uh, I'll be your host with Bill Rizzuto on the field in uniform and Bill White over on TV, and uh, Frank Messer doing his uh, usual fine job this afternoon as the MC of Old Timers Day at the field, Mike, and we'll have a chance to, to visit here in, in the booth uh, while the Old Timers are being introduced and during the two-inning uh, ball game that they will play. This is where it was originated, what has become a staple part of of every uh, Major League uh, franchise activity during the year, Old Timers Day. It began after the war in 1946, and I don't think the Yankees have ever had a more beautiful day weather-wise for their Old Timers celebration. A tremendous crowd is filling up the beautiful uh, renovated Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Blue skies, puffy white clouds, ideal temperatures, somewhere between 80 and 85. Very low humidity. And what we have got today, this is the seventh year in a row that I have done Old Timers Day on radio for the Yankees. And this is easily the most beautiful day that I can remember in the uh, seven years. There have been quite a few days where, where it has rained. One year, I recall, it, the game actually was postponed uh, until the next day when they played it in between the halves of a doubleheader, much like they would have had to have done with the doubleheader tomorrow against Minnesota. There's no chance of that. It's a beautiful day. We'll set the scene for you. We'll give you the theme and and talk a little bit about that in just about 60 seconds right after this message from Firestone. Where the roads and wine with travelers, with friends, with family, with people going places, seeing all there is to see. Where the ride is always sure and smooth, you'll find the trusted friend you've always known. It's Firestone. Firestone, Firestone, Firestone. Where the family car is moving, where a night truck fights the rain, where the race cars scream around the track, where the tractors farm the plane, wherever we John Sterling back at Yankee Stadium as Old Timers Day just a couple of minutes from uh, beginning. The theme for this 32nd annual New York Yankees Old Timers Day, the celebration of the 25th year, the silver anniversary celebration of the amazing run of five straight pennants and five world championships from 1949 through 1953. And the Yankees have uh, compiled probably their greatest guest list of old timers uh, this year including the first ever appearance of the Jolly Roger, Roger Maris who was uh, back in uh, Yankee uniform and took batting practice incidentally in uh, in batting practice your favorite old Yankee flake <laughs> Joe Pepitone hit two out and on the last one that he hit out he ran around the bases giving his home run shot some uh, practice Frank Messer is coming out to the center of the field the Yankees won in 1949 on the last day of the season here at the stadium against the Red Sox. They had to win Saturday and Sunday. They were one game out with two games to go. They won it and beat the Dodgers in five games in 49. In 50, the Yankees had to beat out the Detroit Tigers. And they went on to win the World's Championship against uh, the Philadelphia Phillies in four straight games. And the young left-hander won his first World Series game in that final game, Whitey Ford. In 1951, the Yankees coasted, for the most part, to the pennant and defeated the New York Giants in the uh, Subway Series across the Harlem River between uh, the Bronx and Manhattan, beating the Giants in six games. And you might recall that was uh, the series which featured uh, Phil Rizzuto getting the ball kicked out of his glove against Eddie Stanky. To this day, as they say, you don't invite Rizzuto and Stanky <laughs> to the same cocktail party. 
1952, the Yankees won their fourth straight pennant. Tying the record set by a couple of other Yankee teams in the past, most prominently the 1936 through 39 Yankee teams managed by Joe McCarthy. And in 1952, the Yankees were one game down, three games to two to the Dodgers. They had to play the last two games in Nevis Field. The string was about to be broken. But the Yankees rallied with their backs literally to the wall. Billy Martin had a great World Series. He made that diving catch in the seventh game of a pop-up right near the uh, third base line off the bat of Jackie Robinson when no other Yankee had called for the ball. Martin dashed across the infield from second base and caught the ball right out of his shoot chops. And then the Yankees won the pennant easily in 53 and beat the Dodgers in six games when Martin had a, a great World Series and the Yankees won five pennants and five World Series. That was the theme that is being expressed today, the five pennants and five World Championships 1949 through 1953. Now, let's go down to the field and pick up the MC work of uh, our own Frank Messer. Thank you very much, Bob Shepard. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And welcome to the New York Yankees 32nd Annual Old Timers Day. Today, we are proud to honor the teams of 1949, 1950, 1951, 1952, and 1953 on the 25th anniversary of the completion of their unprecedented string of five straight world championships. And now let's begin the ceremonies. Our first guest this afternoon pitched in three World Series with the Dodgers. He was really ahead of his time. He told it like it was. And once in a series game, claimed to have lost a ground ball in the sun. A native New Yorker, he rates a real New York welcome, Billy Lowe's. Billy Lowe's a stable part of those Yankee Dodger World Series in uh, the early and mid A Yankee of recent vintage is here today back in Ben Stripes as the Yankees' first base coach. During his Yankee career, he annually went to spring training as a utility man, but just as annually, he wound up as the regular shortstop. He even pitched three scoreless innings once. Let's greet the once-in-a-lifetime pitcher, Gene Michael. Our next guest was one of a long line of Yankee relievers. He had that good sinker ball. He's now very active in boys' athletics. A welcome to Tom Gorman. And now a Brooklyn lad who had to leave town to make good. He pitched for the Tigers, the White Sox, and the Baltimore Orioles. It was always a tough blow for the Yankee teams of the early 1950s. Let's hear it for Saul Rogovan. Our next guest won Rookie of the Year honors in 1961 with Kansas City. He stole 31 bases that season to earn the plaudits. He later played with Cleveland, then wound up his playing career with the Yankees and stayed to replace the perennial third base coach, Frank Crosetti. A nice hand for the Yankees veteran coach, Dick Hauser. And now, a native New Yorker who stayed right at home to make it, playing most of his career with the Giants, our next guest made the final out of the 1951 World Series but it took one heck of a catch to retire him. Let's greet Sal Evars. Now, I wonder if you remember that. Evars hitting a line drive to right field and Bauer making a sliding catch on his back to end the 51 Our next series. guest missed being a participant in the five straight gain due to injuries. Having successfully served as a parachutist in World War II, 
He was injured in his first game as a Yankee in 1948. He was traded the next year and was a 20 game winner in 1953. Let's greet our first time visitor, Bob Porterfield. Bob Porterfield trotting out the right hand. Our pitcher. next guest was Been a key a performer when the Philadelphia Whiz Kids won the 1950 pennant and faced the Yankees in the World Series. He's still very active as a scout for the Phillies. Always a good clutch hitter and a good guy. Let's greet Andy Semenik. Our next guest came to the Yankees in an eight-player deadline deal in 1950 and proved to be a vital cog as a reliever and spot starter. He appeared in 34 games in 1951, and 16 of them were Yankee victories. Just retired after 20 years as a school teacher, let's greet Joe Ostrowski. Noted cheaply as a reliever, our next guest also did quite a job when he got a starting chance. Like in the sixth game of the 1956 World Series. He beat Bob Turley and the Yankees won nothing, but the Yankees came back to win the seventh game. Let's greet an old Dodger favorite, Clem Levine. Our next guest had a booming bat, a shotgun arm, and plenty of speed. In 1949, he made a throw against the Red Sox in a midsummer game to save a victory that could have been the difference in the thrilling pennant race. It's always great to be able to say hello to Cliff Mapes. Cliff Mapes had one of the great throwing arms in baseball. And now here's a fellow who not only played an outstanding shortstop, but could also hit the long ball as indicated by his 21 homers in a season. One of the Phillies was kids in the 1950 World Series and a 17-year major leaguer. Let's greet Granny Hamner. Coming to the Yankees in mid-1952, our next guest had five excellent years in pinstripes. He was a fine outfielder, a solid hitter, and it's always good to have back Irv Noren. This little right-hander with a big heart starred with the Dodgers for a dozen years in Brooklyn and Los Angeles. He pitched two no-hitters, hurled the Dodgers into five World Series, and twice beat the Yankees in postseason play batting 14 of them in 1953 for the then strikeout record. From his home in Indiana, Carl Erskine. <laughs> Teamed with Joe DiMaggio and Tommy Hendrick, our next guest gave the Yankees one of the best outfields in history. A fine outfielder with good power, a great competitor, he contributed to many pennants and a world title. Up from his Yankee land breeding farm in Maryland, a warm welcome to Charlie Keller. Our next guest is a young old-timer since he played through the 1975 season. He played 21 years, led the American League in homers six times, and is fifth on the all-time list with 573 home runs. The MVP in 1969, and our broadcaster for the Minnesota Twins. Let's have a rousing reception for Harmon Killebrew. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no Old Timers Day program would be complete without our next guest. I ask you to turn your attention, please, 
to the Lodge, back of first base, and give a big welcome to the first lady of the Yankees, Mrs. Lou Gehrig. The fans are standing and giving uh, Mrs. Gehrig a, a great round of applause. And while uh, they are, before our next guests are introduced by Frank on the field, why don't we take a 30-second break and we'll get back to Old Timers Day Later. right after this from Firestone. You've heard about Firestone's down-to-earth prices on famous Firestone tires, but did you know they apply to their expert car service department as well? For instance, a lube and oil change is only $5.88 for any car or light truck and includes up to five quarts of high-grade oil and a chassis lubrication. Don't delay. Drive into your Firestone Tire and Auto Service Center, the home of down-to-earth prices. Back at Old Timers Day, they have just introduced Roy Campanella. And the great Dodger star is getting a standing ovation from the crowd of about 50,000 people. Roy in his wheelchair, a happy-go-lucky, ever-veteran guy. It is my pleasure to know Roy. Campy told me that, you know, when he's been in the hospital, he's had a chance to listen to the show that we've done in New York over the years. He's a terrific guy, and New York is giving him a little bit of love right now. Thank you. Whether in the outfield or playing first base, our next guest was always one of the key men in Yankee triumphs. He participated in six World Series, and his ninth inning home run won the 1949 opener one to nothing to actually get the five in a row started. Here's old reliable Tommy Henrik. <laughs> Our next guest had a curveball. Oh, what a curveball. The batters couldn't even hit it when they knew it was coming. He baffled the league's best hitters for 18 years. Twice a 20-game winner. Three times in a row, the league strikeout king. He's back here today as Twins pitching coach. Meet Camilo Pascual. Some loved him, some hated him, but nobody ever ignored him. This young old-timer was exciting, controversial, unpredictable, lovable, and one of only three Yankees to hit two home runs in a single inning. The will of the wisp of baseball, Joe Pepitone. This veteran of 17 Major League seasons is always a welcome visitor. He faced the Yankees in the 1952 World Series as a member of the Dodgers, and again in 1957 as a member of the Milwaukee Braves. A tough competitor and always a dangerous man with a bat in his hand, let's say hello to Andy Pasco. <laughs> Right now, let's take five seconds Our for guess, never identification. Face. One of his memorable Yankee moments was his three-run homer in the eighth inning of the 1958 World Series that wrapped up the title. Let's welcome one of the slugging stars of the 50s and 60s, Bill Moose Gowan. Our next guest first opposed the Yankees in 1953 when he was Rookie of the Year. Last fall, he was still on the other side in the World Series. 
a versatile infielder with the Dodgers in Brooklyn and Los Angeles. He had a 14-year career as a player with seven World Series appearances. A big welcome for the Dodgers' popular coach, Jim Gilliam. The American League's most valuable player in 1963 and Babe Ruth Award winner in 1958 as an outfielder. Our next guest has become a Yankee Stadium fixture. One of a long line of great Yankee catchers and now one of the coaches. Let's meet Elston Howard. When injuries cut short the career of our next guest, he became first base coach for the Twins. Rookie of the Year in 1964, three-time batting champion, and five times leader in hits during his brilliant 14 career. He has a career batting average of 306. A salute to Tony Oliva. When the Giants pulled off the miracle of Coogan's Flop in 1951, our next guest was the man who handled the brilliant pitching staff. He was still the man behind the mask when the Giants swept the Indians in 1954. Later, he was a manager and is now a scout. A big hand for an old New York favorite, Wes Westrom. This veteran right-hander pitched for the Brooklyn Dodgers for seven years and was a member of the 1951 team that lost to the Giants in a playoff. He has served as Major League Pitching Coach and Manager and is now scouting for the Yankees, Clyde King. A pesty versatile infielder for the Giants. Our next guest has done it all in baseball. After an eight-year playing career, he coached, managed, scouted, did broadcasting. He was the first manager the Angels ever had, and he's now back with them as a special scout. Let's meet and greet the always popular Bill Rigney. Always a master craftsman on the mound, our next guest was a key factor in the Giants' march to the 1951 World Series, when he recorded 23 victories. With a short stint as a Yankee, he became one of the few to pitch for all three New York clubs of that era. A big hand for the barber, Sarah Magley. <laughs> A winner of 21 games his rookie year and a major factor in getting the Dodgers into three World Series. Our next guest has always been a local favorite and he still is. Big Ralph Franca. <laughs> Thousands of home runs have been hit. But there was one that will never be forgotten. It changed the Yankees' 1951 World Series full from the Dodgers to the Giants in the twinkling of an eye. The man who hit the shot heard round the world is with us today, the Buddy Scott, Bobby Thompson. Wherever Bracket goes, Bobby Thompson goes, and there they are near the third base uh, foul line together. Frank Messer on the field uh, now introducing uh, the umpires who will be uh, umpiring, the old-time umpires umpiring today's game. And we'll get back to more of the introductions of the old-timers on this old-timers day at Yankee Stadium in just 30 seconds right after this from Firestone. 
You've heard about Firestone's down-to-earth prices on famous Firestone tires. But did you know they apply to their expert car service department as well? A front-end alignment on any American car is only $12.88 with no extra charge for factory air or torsion bar cars. Parts extra if needed. Don't delay. Drive into your Firestone Tire and Auto Center, the home of down-to-earth prices. Back to the field and Frank Messer's introduction. Oh. Our next guest was the first player to ever become a Bobby unanimous Avila choice just introduced. as the American League's MVP. And now the Yankee president will be introduced. The following year, in 1954, he was a vital force in Cleveland's successful drive to end the Yankee domination. He is now the president of the Yankees. Let's say hello to Al Rosen. Obviously, the crowd responding to the resignation of Billy Martin this past week and taking it out on the Yankee president, Al Rosen. Would have been on all five champions, but for That's being called to military duty. Harry Truman said what he uh, said. Lifetime and World you can't Series take the heat, get out of the kitchen. And don't worry, Al Rosen's a tough guy. He can take the heat. To a career as a heart specialist in Texas. It is always a pleasure to welcome back Dr. Bobby Brown. Now, listen here. This is uh, and now this next will be very important. Who played Man on or served were involved with in all five all of the fabulous world five. Let's start with a man who kept them all fit and ready to play and greet the longtime trainer of the Yankees up from his home in Florida, Gus Mouch. <laughs> Our next guest spent more than a half century in uniform and saved the Yankees both as a pitcher and a coach. He was the pitching coach for all five of the fabulous five and for many years beyond. Now in retirement in Tennessee, it's great to greet the Colonel once again. Welcome, Jim Turner. Now, this next fellow didn't get his name in the paper too often, but he was awfully good insurance against a catching emergency. In his nine years with the Yankees, he played on seven pennant winners and six world champions. Let's say hello to Charlie Silvera. This next member of the Fabulous Five Club played on two other pennant winners in addition to all five in the streak. In the 1955 series, he belted two homers and all through his career delivered many clutch hits. He never wore any uniform but the pinstripes. And it's great to greet our Jersey neighbor, Joe Collins. One of the most prolific hitters of all time, our next guest starred with the Cardinals and Giants before coming to the Yankees and helping them win the five straight world titles. In 1952, he won the Babe Ruth Award as the series star, a great pinch hitter, and a great guy. A big welcome back for Johnny Mize. the 
best left-hand hitters in Yankee history. Our next guest played on all five of the champions we are honoring today. A tough competitor, a fine outfielder, and a clutch hitter. It's well great to welcome back Gene Woodling. Our next guest was the last Yankee to pitch a regular season no-hitter. And he pitched not one, but two in 1951, with the second one clinching the pennant. He was one of the big three that helped win the five straight world titles. Winner of seven World Series games, and a man it's always a pleasure to welcome back, the Super Chief, Ali Reynolds. A year ago, our next guest was forced to cancel due to a heart attack. But it's wonderful to have him back today, hale and hearty. Another of the big three of those fabulous five years, and the man who pitched the last day clincher in 1949. We're really happy to welcome the Springfield rifle, Vic Rashi. The left-handed member of the Big Three on five straight world champions, our next guest led the league in ERA in 1953. He ranks as one of the greatest left-handers in Yankee history and a noted jinx to the Indians in all those great pennant races. Now a scout for Montreal, let's greet Steady Eddie Lopat. <laughs> And you know, there's not a whole lot that can be said about our next guest that hasn't already been said. No one ever did it better than he during 13 years, including all five of the consecutive titles as the greatest shortstop in Yankee history for more than two decades. My broadcast partner, the scooter, Phil Rizzuto. times a winner of the most valuable player award our next guest had more home runs than any catcher in history he holds the record for holding world series records the one man who never needs an id card the legendary hall of famer and coach yogi berra guest, a Hall of Famer, was one of the spark plugs when the 1951 Giants came roaring down the stretch to pull off the miracle of Coogan's bluff. He hit 312, led the league with 121 runs batted in. He hit 458 in the series and became the first man in 23 years to steal home in a series game. A member of the commissioner's staff, let's greet Hall of Famer, Marty Irvin. Stepping into the major leagues at the age of 17, our next guest is a baseball immortal. He pitched himself into the Hall of Fame with three no-hitters, 12 one-hitters, myriad strikeout records, and was voted the greatest living right-hander. A real welcome for Rapid Robert Bob Feller. Our next guest, ladies and gentlemen, three times chased the five in a row Yankee champions down to the wire as manager of the Cleveland Indians. Finally, he put an end to the streak, but he had to set a league record of 111 wins to do it. He spent 19 years as a durable major league catcher and a lifetime of being a great guy. 
another member of the Hall of Fame. How about a nice salute to the senor from Tampa, Al Lopez. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask your attention. At this moment, in today's ceremonies, public address announcer Bob Shepard has two very special introductions and announcements. Bob Shepard. Our next guest, one of baseball's greatest right-handers, Earned Hall of Fame membership by hurling 207 victories in a comparatively short career. He was on seven all-star teams, pitched in two World Series, and seven times was a 20-game winner. One of the Yankees' toughest foes during the five straight run, but now the Yankee manager, a warm welcome to Bob Lemon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. The Yankees announced today that Bob Lemon has agreed to a contract to continue as manager of the Yankees through the 1978 and 1979 seasons. Your attention, please. Now, I'm telling you radio fans out there, listen, Your attention, listen please closely, yet you're going to be very surprised. Be In very 1980, surprised. Bob Lemon will become the general manager of the New York Yankees. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. Your attention, please. To repeat... In 1980, Bob Lemon will become the general manager. And the Yankees would like to announce at this time, introducing and announce at the same moment that the manager of the Yankees for the 1980 season and hopefully for many years after that will be Number one, Billy Martin. you to listen and I told you to listen closely. Now I really did not find out about this until I began on the air when we went away to a commercial. I did find out. I must admit that. But I was told not to say anything on the air until it was announced. Bob Lemon will manage the Yankees this year and next year. And then he'll move up as general manager, and then Billy Martin will resume as manager of the Yankees. And Billy is out there. Phil Rizzuto has come over, and they are hugging each other. Billy looks good, rested. The near sellout crowd giving him a standing hole. 
Boy, you talk about high drama. The Yankees make news every day. You have to admit, they're on the right radio station in New York making news. The Yankees are front page news as the crowd continues to give Billy the Kid a standing O. By the way, during the interim period, Martin will be a part of the Yankee front office assisting Cedric Callis and Al Rosen and George Steinbrenner with evaluation of Yankee personnel and Yankee trades. There is a sign up. Billy, you'll always be number one in New York being held aloft. And there's no question that it is a, a sincere appraisal of the people's emotional ties to Billy the Kid. I'll tell you what, with this kind of an emotional springboard, they may uh, tear the house down when Mantle and Damage are announced. They have to renovate this place all over again. There's Billy standing with uh, Yogi Berra on the field, bowing. Go ahead. Tell me this isn't the greatest day in Billy Martin's life. Can you imagine if this happened to any of us? How you'd feel loved and held and whatever. <laughs> I'll tell you what. It is a kick. As I said, this is the seventh year that I've done the old timers day at Yankee Stadium. And I'll tell you what, they keep getting in better and better. But I don't know how they're ever going to top this. I'll tell you that. saying goes, go play that on your violin. The crowd is still standing and still showering love on Billy Martin who is on the field. And Billy Martin will be the manager in uh, at 1980. If you're wondering, uh, Roger Maris has not been introduced yet. Whitey Ford has neither, I believe. And Roger, and of course, Mickey and Joe. As uh, Frank Messer is, uh, is about ready to begin. Unbelievable announcement at Yankee Stadium as, has rendered the sellout crowd here. Ladies and, uh, and gentlemen. Well, here's Frank once again. Here's Frank Messer once again on the we field. We all know how you feel. Now, here is uh, Billy Martin going over to Al Rosen and shaking his hand. You know, Rosen had to take that booing, and he took it very well. Now, Billy went over to shake his hand. Of course, the... Uh, of course, the players on the field who played against Billy all those years are probably giving him a pretty good ribbing. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I don't know what else the Yankees do, but they are never dull. They are never dull. And in case you wondered, the Yankees are very much back in the pennant race, but we'll talk uh, about that afterwards. Now that the fans have been given uh, Billy back, they are going to go out of their skulls when Mantle and Dimash and Roger Maris. Now, Roger Maris has never been back, and they are going to give him a little bit of love. Ladies and gentlemen, now here's Frank. We know how you feel, and I know Billy appreciates it. And 
just as you welcomed Billy Martin with your heartfelt enthusiasm, I am sure that you will extend the same welcomes to the rest of our guests this afternoon. Right now, I'd like to introduce a very crafty, a very classy guy, a Cy Young Award winner in 1961. One of the all-time Yankee pitching greats, a Hall of Famer who has the top winning percentage of all 200-plus game winners. He has won more World Series games than any man in history. One of the most popular athletes New York has ever known, Whitey Ford. could have been the theme song of our next guest. One of the best right fielders in Yankee history, a tough base runner and competitor, the guy who did the job they said could never be done. He broke Babe Ruth's single season home run record. First time back, Roger Maris. <laughs> Pretty much a standing ovation for Roger Maris. Now you're going to hear some noise uh, as they then introduce our, our next guest. Introduces Mickey and Joe, a member of the Hall of Fame, three times Most Valuable Player, Triple Crown winner, the greatest switch hitter of all time, Mickey Mantle. <laughs> You've got some left. Let's let it all hang out. Baseball's greatest living player, the incomparable Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> gentlemen, while most of you are still standing, would you remain standing, please? Uh, we request everyone else to please rise. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, would you please offer a moment of respectful silence for the more than 30 baseball figures who have passed away since our last old timers day. The names include such well-known former Yankees 
as Joe McCarthy. Bob Musil. Edna Stengel. Joe Gordon. Monty Pearson. Bucky Harris. Roger Peckinpah. Sherm Lawler. And Jack Saltzgaver. Ladies and gentlemen, with deep respect, our national anthem. you'd have to say that's a fairly emotional beginning to Old Timers Day 1978. Now we'll have the Old Timers game and who knows what other news that uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll bring you before the Yankees and the Twins resume in their respective uh, pennant races. We'll get back with Old Timers Day right after this from Firestone. You've heard about Firestone's down-to-earth prices on famous Firestone tires. But did you know they apply to their expert car service department as well? For instance, a lube, oil, and oil filter on most American cars is just $8.88 and includes up to five quarts of high-grade oil. So don't delay. Drive into your Firestone Tire and Auto Service Center, the home of down-to-earth prices. So right now, before the old-timers game begins, let's uh, take five seconds for station identification. You're listening to 1460 WOKO, Albany. Back at Old Timers Day, 1978. How are you doing on this beautiful Saturday afternoon amid the uh, nostalgia, the emotion, the hoopla, the excitement, and the news that the Yankees have announced today? This is John Sterling with you. And will be for a bit. The longtime voice of the Yankees and a new Hall of Fame broadcaster, Mel Allen, will be announcing the play by play on the field of the game, and, and we'll have it up here. It's obviously a very much a fun game, a two inning game. Although I think some of the players take it seriously. Harmon Killebrew is hitting a lot of home runs in batting practice. Elston Howard always makes sure he takes some BP. Elston Howard is probably hitting about 800 in these games, coast to coast. <laughs> and uh, and then, of course, the uh, the regular game. We've mentioned before, people gave up on the federal race a little too quickly. Baseball history will note, tennis not won until the end of September. 
and the Yankees and the Brewers and the Orioles are very much in the hunt. The Red Sox in the American League East. We'll bring you up to date after the Old Timers Day on what's happening in, in the real world of baseball. And once again, for those who were late tuners in, and I'm sorry you were because you missed as emotional an announcement as I've ever heard. And I have been a baseball fan and a Yankee fan since I've been a child. My dad brought me out here to Yankee Stadium. A lot of different things have happened. The Yanks have always been involved in the news, having won so many pennants and, and world championships. But the Yankees have announced Mr. Steinbrenner, Al Rosen, that Bob Lemon has agreed to a five-year contract to be manager of the Yanks this year and next year. And then in 1980, he will become general manager of the Yankees, as well as vice president. And in 1980, replacing Lemon on the field as manager will be Billy Martin. That's right. Billy Martin was introduced, and of course, he just brought the place down. And they gave him a standing O for... Oh, I would say about five minutes. Billy Martin in the interim period, for this uh, remainder of this year and next year, will serve as a, uh, a consultant, I guess, uh, to the Yankee front office, working with and assisting Al Rosen in uh, player movement and trades and evaluation of, of Yankee players, both major and minor league. Well, now let's go back in time and uh, and look at the, the Yankees, many of whom were involved in in the theme of today's Old Timers Day, the five straight pennants and five straight world championships, 1949 through 1953. The Yankees will take the field in the top of the first inning with Yogi Berra behind the plate, Joe Collins at first. And if my scorecard is correct, Ellie Howard playing out of position at second base. Our favorite shortstop, the scooter, Phil Rizzuto, and uh, Dr. Bobby Brown playing third. Not a bad outfield of Gene Woodling, Roger Maris, and Tommy Hendrick. And slated to pitch in the uh, first inning. Will be the nucleus of uh, the staff in 52 and 53. 53 when Whitey came back from the Army. Whitey Ford, Eddie Lopat, and Allie Reynolds, because Big Rashi also was included. They like that as your starting four. Not a bad starting four. Four guys tough in their own way. Whitey Ford will begin. I wonder if he's going to cut up that ball. Or is he leaving that to Don Sutton these days? <laughs> well, there is one change. Joe Pepitone's playing first instead of uh, Joe Collins. Unless uh, Joe Collins has grown a full black beard. Now, Peppy's at first base, and the rest of the team is as we gave you. Coming up for the visiting team will be uh, Jim Gilliam, Bobby Avila, Bobby Thompson, Harmon Killebrew, Bob Lemon, Wes Westrom, Andy Papko, and Granny Hamner. Now, this is certainly subject to change. And they don't have to go to the commissioner's office to change things around or whatever. Jim Gilliam is up there. The Dodgers switch hitter. And he takes inside for ball one. Gilliam hitting right-handed. He is in shape. He's a Dodger coach, and he is very much in shape. And he hits a fly ball to short left field. Under the ball is Gene Woodling. And Woodling makes the catch and has one away. Now, Woodling played so many big games in left field for the Yankees. And played his very best in the toughest situations. Here's a great left-hand hitter, Tony Oliva. Tony Oliva, if he didn't have a, a permanently damaged knee, would still be playing. He was playing up to a couple of years ago, pinch hitting for the Twins. He just couldn't run anymore, but he could really hit. And he takes outside for a ball. Oliva up and Bobby Thompson on deck. Whitey comes down low, ball two. I'm sure Ford has promised not to throw any of his curveballs. This is the plate for ball three. Oliva then hits a ground ball in the first base hole for a base hit to right field. Oliva only did that about 300 times a year in his career. 
pulling that inside pitch sharply between first and second. And here's Bobby Thompson. Whitey Ford leaves and Steady Eddie Lopez comes to the mound. Of course, you know that during Lopez's career, they, they would call him the junk man. Sometimes when a, a team would lose to him, they would say that not very affectionately. But boy, around here, it was known affectionately. He was a great pitcher. Lopat used to throw slow, slower, and slowest and get you out, which really gets you angry. And Lopat is ballooning the pitches up here. He's behind 2-0 and on Bobby Thompson. A man on and a man out in the top of the first of old-timers' day. Thompson hits a ground ball in the hole. Pass Rizzuto for a base hit. <laughs> Thompson grounded a ball that Rizzuto used to get. And I think uh, I think that will serve for Rizzuto's confreres up here in the broadcast area to kid him for a while. <laughs> so it's a ground single to left field for Bobby Thompson. And here's Harmon Killebrew. And Rizzuto's playing on the outfield grass for Killebrew. Lopat balloons one up for ball one. Killebrew was hitting him in the seat now. He's in very much in shape, too. Harmon is a, one of the television broadcasters for the Twins. Big, strong right-hand hitter. The 2 0 pitches hit a mile to center field. Falling down and missing the ball is Roger Maris. It will roll behind him and go all the way to the warning track in dead center field. Killebrew never could run, and he, he'll get the third with a triple. A two-run triple as Killebrew hit a line drive sharply that bounced in front of Roger Maris. <laughs> Might be Killebrew's first triple, right? He had no trouble hitting the home run, though. So the opponents have a 2 nothing lead, and here is uh, Bobby Avila. Lopat's favorite team to pitch against was the Indians. Uh, Avila takes a big cut and misses. The ball and a strike. Now, Lopat pitched very, very well against the Indians throughout his career. Avila rounds this one foul outside of third. It'll be one and two. Avila bounces this one to the mound. Lopat will hold the runner and throw Avila out. And there's two outs in the top of the first. Now, here is the gentleman who made, we are talking about this before, the last out of the 51 series. No, I thought this was um, Allie Reynolds is coming on. I thought it was Sal Evars, and I realize it isn't Sal Evars, it's Wes Westerman. Allie Reynolds comes in to pitch the Super Chief for the Yanks with a 2-0 uh, lead for the visitors in the top of the first inning. It is Sally Bars. You can tell that by his stance. He has that open stance with the front foot pulled toward third base. Evar standing that way hit a line drive the opposite way to right field, and Bauer made a sliding catch with a tying run on base in the top of the ninth of the sixth and final game of the 51 series. Evar takes a strike, and Allie Reynolds ahead of uh, Sal 1 and 2. Avar is now boots a little handle hit to left field for a base hit. And the visiting old timers have a 3 0 lead. A beautiful Saturday afternoon for Old Timers Day at Yankee Stadium, a near sellout crowd, and the Yankees have made very, very dramatic and unexpected news today. Which we will cover again, and I'm sure that Frank and Bill and Phil and Fran will cover it during the game. Here's Andy Pavko, that famed rocking chair stands of his. And he grounds this one to third. A foul ball. Well, wait a minute. Now they're going to call it a, a fair ball. And Bobby Brown made a nice stop. And he didn't want to throw it because I don't think he could throw it from that far behind third without hurting his arms. So they're going to call it a foul ball, and Pavko will get up again.
Right, Papko ripped this one foul down the left field line and just missing the foul pole. Papko's in shape. Now here's a face hit to left field for Papko, a line drive. Papko hit the ball sharply three straight times, and it really is interesting that these players never lose the swing. And once they've done it, they never lose it. Now, Andy Pamko has not played baseball for, I guess, about 20 years. Maybe, maybe more than that. And he had three rips and hit three line drives. Granny Hamner of the Phils fouls it off. The old-timers of the visiting team have two on and two out in the top of the first, and they've scored three runs. Hamner pops this one foul outside of third. Allie Reynolds still doing the pitching for the Yankee old-timers. One and two as Reynolds misses outside. Andy Semenik is on deck in an old-time Phillies uniform. Here's a ground ball to second. Stopped by Ellie Howard, and he throws him out. Good play by Ellie. So the visitors score three. We'll have Maris and Mantle and uh, Rizzuto in the bottom of the first. When we return, right after this message from Firestone. You've heard about Firestone's down-to-earth prices on famous Firestone tires. But did you know they apply to their expert car service department as well? For instance, a 10-point brake overhaul, including rebuilt wheel cylinders and turn drums, is just $69.88 for any American car with drum-type brakes, luxury cars excluded. Convenient credit plans available. Don't delay. Drive into your Firestone Tire and Auto Service Center, the home of down-to-earth prices. Of course, after... Uh... The old-timers game, the regular game between the Yanks and Twins. The Yankees are very much in that pennant race with the Red Sox losing 9 out of 11. And don't forget, tomorrow afternoon, the Yankees in Minnesota will have a big doubleheader here at the stadium beginning at 1 o'clock. That includes the makeup of a rained-out earlier game. Then the Texas Rangers come in for their final visit of the year Monday and Tuesday night at 8. Tickets for all these games are on sale here at the stadium at Ticketron and at all Yankee ticket outlets. Tomorrow afternoon, a double dip. The Yankees and the Twins beginning at 1. The scooter, Phil Rizzuto, is up. Now will he bunt? Will he slap that pitch the opposite way? Bobby Feller is pitching for the visitors. The scooter is up with Ellie Howard on deck. Lil Phil wearing his number 10 with a gum on the top of his hat. Fakes the bunt, swings away, and lines one foul outside of third. I'll tell you what, Gilliam is at third base, and as I said before, he's in shape. He'll throw Phil out unless he gets a really good bunt down with that backspin. There's the bunt attempt, and it's fouled off 0-2. Oh <laughs> Phil takes off his glasses to make sure that he can still see. Mel Allen asked on the air, did Phil do that on his own bunt? And that, uh, that gets a laugh or two. A feller ahead of Rizzuto 0-2 comes sidearm and is up by ball 1-2. Sal Evars is catching for the visitors. Tony Olivas at first. Rizzuto swings and foul tips it. There's going to be a lot of foul tip third strikes here. <laughs> be a whole bunch. Here's the one and two to Scooter, and he fouled it off again at the plate. And Phil takes outside ball two, two, and two. Rizzuto fouls it off again at the plate. Sal Ivar has conveniently dropped the ball. So Phil has another cut. Ellie Howard then on deck, and then the M.M. boys. Well, 
Bob Fellow just brushed back Rosito. It's three and two on Phil. And Phil takes a walk. Now, Ellie is in shape, as we said. And, and Ellie has played in a lot of these old-timers days. And he can still swing the bat. He takes it outside for a ball. Rizzuto on first and and Maris and Mantle coming up. Rizzuto steals second. Not <laughs> an extra slow fellow changeup as Howard misses the pitch. Feller falls behind two and one. And Ellie Howard pops this one up in the infield. Oliva coming from first base and makes the catch in foul territory. And there's one out. Carl Erskine will pitch and Roger Maris will hit. Roger still has the crew cut. He's a little rounder around the middle. So Roger Maris came over to the Yanks for the 1950 season. The Yankees won five straight pennants with Maris as their right fielder, great throwing arm, and of course, a marvelous home run hitter, run producer. Everyone, of course, remembers the 61 homers in 61, but Maris had a brilliant year in 60 as well. One and one on Roger, and he uh, fouls uh, this pitch off. It's one and two. Roger's timing appears to be a little off. He was very much a, that kind of a hitter. Had to get in a groove. Had a perfect swing for this ballpark. By the way, one of our sponsors, Maris, now three and two, is Budweiser on the Yankee broadcast. And Roger has a Budweiser franchise down in Florida. I think it's Gainesville, Florida. So he's doing rather well. Maris is a high fly ball to right field in the general direction, just not far enough. And Bobby Thompson will make the catch. Phil has tagged up and gone from second to third. If, uh, if Phil sounds a little breathless on the air today, it, it isn't excitement. <laughs> if he ever gets up here. Here's Mickey Mantle. Now Carl Erskine is going to be relieved by Ralph Branca. Mickey is batting right-handed, even though he's a right-hand pitcher, because his knees, of course, uh, always giving him trouble, forced him to, to really be a right-hand hitter at the end of his career. Not that he stopped switching, but he wasn't as effective. Rizzuto on third with two out, had Mantle up in the bottom of the first, and Roger Maris had that same swing. Eh? These players just don't lose it. Now, he didn't hit the ball as far, but... He pumped the ball out toward right field. All right, here's Branca to Mickey Mantle, who takes inside ball one. Rosito is standing in the third base coaching box. Uh, Discretion being the better part of Valor. Not going to get in the way of Mantle's shot. Mantle fouls this one off. You can really forget the count on Mantle. It's two and one, but he could throw him 30 pitches outside, but Mel Allen will see through that Mantle swings. He fouls this one off. It's two and two. Mantle 
Mickey takes another pitch inside, and this is where the count will freeze. It's three and two, and it will remain three and two. Randall uh, fouls this one off. And he is grinning at the plate. <laughs> oh, Scott! A line drive to left field. Just foul, hitting off the facing of the third deck. That's amazing. That's what I was telling you about. That's what I was telling you about. They never lose the feeling. They never lose that swing. Mantle ripped a line drive. And another one, this one is well fouled on the third deck. But the first one was pretty well down the line, and it curved foul hit the facing of the third deck. Mantle takes inside, but as I said, the count will freeze at three and two. It's amazing how the players just don't lose that swing. Vicky pops this one up in the infield. And if Jim Gilliam makes the catch at third, the inning will be over. He does. And the inning is over. And at the end of one, the Yankee opponents have a 3 nothing lead. We'll get back with the uh, second inning of the Yankee Old Timers Day game right after this message from Firestone. With the summer holidays fast approaching, we at Firestone urge you to check your tires before you travel. If replacement is needed, we offer courteous service and really down-to-earth prices on our complete tire line. For instance, our polyester cord deluxe champion is only $19.95 for the A7813 black wall, plus the $1.69 federal excise tax and old tire. Of course, mounting is free, and convenient credit plans are available at your Firestone Tire and Auto Service Center, where courtesy and quality go hand in hand. John throwing back at Yankee Stadium on Old Timers Day, 1978. And the Yankee Old Timers having a 3 0 lead, which is not exactly the most important part of this, uh, this great day. An Old Timers Day that's been overshadowed by a startling announcement from the Yankee front office, Bob Lemon, being signed to a five year contract to manage for this year and next, and then general manage the Yankees. And Billy Martin coming back as manager of 1980. Well, you'll see that in the front page of many newspapers. Manny Stemenek comes up for the Yankee opponents and hits a line drive single to left field. Andy has grown a little heavier and just has reached first base. <laughs> but he could still swing the bat, and that is such an interesting factor. Seminick on first base with no one out. Jim Gilliam is coming uh, up for his uh, second time. And a Yankee left-hand relief pitcher of the early 50s has come in. Joe Ostrowski will pitch. The Yankees have Bobby Brown at third. Gene Michael is playing short. Ellie Howard at second. And Joe Pepitone at first. Gilliam hits a fly ball to center field. And Irv Noren makes the catch. He's playing center field now with Bill Scourin in right. And Gene Woodling in left field. Tony Oliva is up with one on and one out. With uh, Semenuk at first base. Oliva now lines this one to right field. And it's over the head of Scarron. One bounce off the wall. However, I can guarantee you that no runs will score. Scarron throws the ball in, and Semenik gets to second base, and Oliva gets to first. About to say that with Andy Semenik at, the, at first base before that hit, and Tony Oliva with that bad knee, the ground ball would have been two. Oliva hit a line drive on one half off the right field fence. It's a single. And Oliva could still hit. He could still hit today. Charlie Silvera is doing the catching for the Yankee old-timers.
And Bob Porterfield has come on a pitch for the Yanks. Bobby Thompson comes up to hit for the visitors, the opponents. Bobby Thompson's the ground ball to third. Pretty play by Bobby Brown to Howard for one and a first for the DP. Good double play around the horn, as they say, a 5-4-3 double play. And we'll come to the final half inning, the bottom of the second, as the Yankees come up, see if they can get on the board. They're trailing 3 to nothing. We'll have the bottom of the second right after uh, this message from Firestone. You've heard about Firestone's down-to-earth prices on famous Firestone tires. But did you know they apply to their expert car service department as well? For instance, a precision tune-up for most six-cylinder American cars is just $32.70 and includes resistor plugs. Some air-conditioned cars are extra. Convenient credit plans available. Don't delay. Drive into your Firestone Tire and Auto Service Center, the home of down-to-earth prices. Right now, let's uh, pause five seconds for station identification. You're listening to 1460 WOKO, Albany. John Sterling back at Yankee Stadium. About to wrap up Old Timers Day of 1978. With the uh, opponents having a three-run lead and Yogi Berra about to lead off for uh, the Yankee Old Timers. They held up the game because the visiting team did not have a left fielder, which was not noticed at first. <laughs> Yogi takes inside. Sal Magley is doing the pitching now for the uh, for the opponent. And Yogi lines this one. A great stop by uh, Oliva. And he will outrun Barrett in the bag. Pretty stop by Tony Oliva. Harmon Killebrew, who uh, played in this game, is now up in the in the next booth, about to go on the air for Minnesota. Harmon not only was a home run hitter, but also pretty fast showerer and dresser. Clem Labine is doing the pitching, and uh, Gene Woodling grounds this one foul outside of first. Labine's pitch is grounded foul again. Clem Labine through the sinker. A very good sinker. And had a very, very strong arm. He pitched uh, many, many years of top flight relief for the Dodgers. And on occasion, of course, started. The Dodgers needed a... The Woodling popped this one foul down the right field line. It's going to go in the seats right down the line where the line, the foul line, and the stands come together. The Dodgers needed a well-pitched game. They were short of starters. They'd start LeBron, and of course they didn't. In a famous game in 1956, in the sixth game, LeBond just a 10 inning, 1 nothing shutout for the Dodgers. Here's a base hit by Woodling to right center field. 
and will go past Bobby Thompson. Now the question is how long can Woodling run? He's going to run to second base and he's going to stay right there. The ball is retrieved by Andy Pasco and thrown in. Big line drive by Woodling. Here is Joe Pepitone. he's ever had to face or any other ball club he pitched for the old Washington Senators Camilo Pascal he can still throw a pretty good hook we have Bill Allen on for a moment for you here is Joe Pepe and he ripped the line drive to right field, back toward the wall, and off the wall for an extra base hit. Pepitone is ready to play. <laughs> Pepitone's going to go on to third. Woodling scores. It's a 3-1 game, and Pepitone will hold it third with a line drive off the bottom of the right field wall near where the old right field bullpen was, about 350 feet away. Pepitone's been playing a slow pitch softball. He was in shape. <laughs> Billy Lowe's is fishing now for the uh, opponents and Bobby Brown will come up and hit for the uh, Yankees. Been a couple of pretty well hit line drive in this old timers game. Bobby Brown takes the pitch low and rips this one a right field for a base hit. And the Yankee old timers score the second run as Pepitone hits the plate. And Brown will hold it first base. They are not booing. They are simply greeting Moose Cowan. Not as very much the same way they will greet Lou Pinella today here in the stadium. Moose is also very much in shape. And he hits a hard shot off the glove at short of Hammer. And he will beat the throw to first base. And the Yankees have the tying run on a second and the lead run on a first, the winning run on a first. Presume they would stop the game. Here is Johnny Mize. Mize who had a long National League career with the Cardinals and the Giants and came over here in 49 and served as a great pinch hitter in those five straight pennants and world championships. Played first every now and then. Mize grounds this one in front of the plate. Trots to first base and Ebars will throw him out. And so it comes down to a 3-2 ball game opponents with a tying run on a third and the winning run on a second and two out. And Irv Noren will come up. Now they have a Yankee uniform pitching against Irv Noren. And Noren hits a ground ball and Oliva stabs and he'll make the play at first base to end the old timers day. Pretty good ball game with the opponents beating the Yankee old timers in the 78 and 32nd renewal of the Yankee old timers game 3 to 2. And all the players get a great hand from the crowd. And that was that was fun. That was grand fun. We'll get back now in just um, we'll get back in just about 30 seconds right after this message from Where the roads and wine with travelers with friends with family with people going places seeing all there is to see Where the ride is always 
trusted friend you've always known. It's Firestone. Yankee Stadium. That's the Yankee Old Timers game. Now the real game, the Yankees and Twins, and very much of, of a pennant race in the American League East, and the Yankees very much in the middle of that. And we'll get to, to the lineups and last night's scores at all in just a moment. So stay tuned for New York Yankee baseball right here. Yankee Baseball is sponsored by the you Who Beverages, the Household Finance Corporation, Champion Spark Plus, Budweiser Beer, and by Riffle's Home Improvement Center, Gulf Oil, and Colonial Provisions, makers of Yankee Frank. Good afternoon, everyone, from Yankee Stadium. Welcome to New York Yankee Baseball. This is John Sterling, and of course, you'll be hearing in a moment from Frank Messer, Bill White, Bill Rizzuto, and Fran Healy. Old Timers Day has been concluded, a startling announcement today, in case you have just tuned in, and I'm sorry to repeat it for those who have been listening throughout, but the Yankees announced that, that Bob Lemon will continue to manage the Yankees for the remainder of this year and next year, and then move up to be general manager of the Yankees in 1980. And at that time, the Yankees announced that starting in 1980, the manager of the team will be Billy Martin. In the interim, Martin will be consulting and working with Al Rosen and Bob Lemon in the evaluation of Yankee players and minor league players, trades, etc. And then Billy will resume his role as manager in 1980. And that just absolutely rocked and overshadowed all the other events that had take place on an old-timers day. Now, of course, it's the real thing. The Yankees and the Minnesota Twins, with the Boston Red Sox losing game after game after game, the, there is very much a pennant race in the American League East. I, I know there are many of you who get early newspapers, do not know the scores, so the first thing we'll do before giving you the lineups, Ken Clay will pitch for the Yankees against a rookie left-handed Darrell Jackson for Minnesota. But last night in the American League, Minnesota was beating the Yankees 7-5 to five in 10 innings on a two-run home run by Willie Norwood in the, uh, in the 10th inning. The Yankees had fought from a 4-1 deficit. Greg Nettles did a two-run double in the 8th inning to tie that game. And while the Yankees were losing, Boston was being shut out by Rich Gale, the tall right-hander from the University of New Hampshire. Kansas City shut out the Red Sox 4 to nothing. Baltimore beat California 5-4 to in 11. Toronto defeated Milwaukee 3-2, to a big loss for the Brewers as they have moved so close to Boston. Cleveland over Oakland 4-2. to Detroit beat Seattle 4-3 to and Texas down Chicago 9-5. to We're not even into August yet. The center race has tightened up considerably in the American League East. The Red Sox have only a four-game lead over Milwaukee and three of that in the loss count. A six-and-a-half game lead over Baltimore, and the Yankees are in fourth place eight games out. The Yankees have a record of 55 and 45. Well, they have 62 games left. And with 62 games left and being only eight games out, Fran Healy, you'd have to say there's very, very much a pennant race. Not only have stranger things happened to Strange things have happened with 10 games left or 15 games left, and she could recall many pennant races, but, but uh, with uh, Milwaukee being only four out and Baltimore six and a half and the Yankees eight games out and 
two full months to play, people who gave up on the pennant race a couple of weeks ago have to be pretty surprised today. Without a doubt, John, I'm sure that uh, the Red Sox are primarily concerned with the New York Yankees for the simple reason that the Yankees were the world champions last year. Of course, Baltimore with a fine pitching staff right back in the thick of things in Milwaukee. A ball club that has been much improved with the acquisition of Larry Eisel. So, once again, it will be a pennant race the rest of the year. The thing is, you can't give up in baseball because there are so many, many games to be played. And people always want to say, well, that's the end of the... I have friends in Baltimore, Fran, where I worked for many years. And uh, friends in Baltimore have told me after the Orioles have lost four straight to the Red Sox, well, this is it. The Orioles won't get back in the pennant race. And they're right there after only six and a half games out. You just can't give up. Well, it really is unbelievable. Of course, early in the year, the Orioles rattled off 19 out of 20 victories. Uh, they lost one game in that span, and it's, it's just an unbelievable ball club. Of course, when you have that pitching staff of a Palmer, McGregor, Martinez, it's an excellent pitching staff. And uh, not to forget Mike Flanagan, a left-hander. And that's the name of the game. If you can get a good pitching staff with good defense, you can beat just about anybody. You can always manufacture a run, but you have to have that sound pitching, which the Baltimore Orioles do. Of course, the Yankees right now, their pitching staff having problems with injuries. Baltimore, a good pitching staff. The Yankees can manufacture more runs, a better defense, so I gotta believe the Yankees are gonna be in it all the way. Baltimore, once again, because of the pitching and defense, in it all the way. And Milwaukee, of course, they now have confidence beside the good ball club, so they're gonna give the Boston Red Sox a good run for it. And let's not forget the Red Sox. They've experienced some injuries. Rick Burleson, he's been out with a bad ankle. Carl Yastrzemski in a hospital with a bad back. Of course, he's a very important part of the Red Sox machine. They had Freddie Lynn out of the lineup the other day with an injury. So injuries are starting, starting to plague the Boston Red Sox, similar to the way they plagued the New York Yankees earlier this season. It's a rare season when a team goes through it without any injuries, any disruption to their uh, to their regular ball club. We haven't covered the other uh, divisions, the Western and the American League and the National League. We will we'll give you the late scores and give you the standings. Right now, let's pause for this message, then we'll return before the Yankee Twins ball game. Your car noisy, brakes stopping poorly. It's time to see the specialists at Safeway Muffler and Brake Shops, a trusted name for over 18 years. You know, when you take your car to Safeway, they make you feel important. They treat you courteously. They take the time to do a good job. Their prices are reasonable, too. And at Safeway, you get fast, free muffler installation with a lifetime guarantee. Service is efficient because Safeway Muffler and Brake Shop carries a complete stock of mufflers, pipes, and brakes for both American and foreign cars. Safeway wants your business, sure. But even more, they want satisfied customers. So, when you need reliable muffler or brake work, see the specialists at either of two convenient locations. Albany at 1117 Central Avenue, just one mile east of Colony Center, and in Schenectady at 1731 State Street, one mile east of the Mohawk Mall. Charge it with one of Safeway's instant credit plans. Safeway Muffler and Brake, a name you can trust. A reminder that this program is authorized by the New York Yankees solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the description and or accounts of this game without the express consent of the New York Yankees is prohibited. In the uh, Western Division, Kansas City has a five-game lead over California. That's all come about in the past couple of weeks. Oakland is seven games out. Texas eight and a half games behind the National League scores last night. But Fran, uh, Jerry Kuzman lost a heartbreaker last night. He had a 3 nothing lead going in the bottom of the ninth, and Houston hit bloops and ground balls, whatever, and tied it up and won uh, four to 4-3 in uh, 10 innings. Philadelphia and Cincinnati split a doubleheader, and Pete Rose got a base hit in each game. And uh, now you'd have to say that, I mean, you don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow, but now it's foreseeable that he's going to give DiMaggio a run. It's unbelievable, really, because... For the simple fact, most people felt the only record that would ever stand forever, never be broken, is the record by Joe D. The 56 straight games. And, of course, right now Pete Rose, an outside chance to catch him. And Rose, a great competitor. 
gets up now to these ball games. Of course, Cincinnati in the pennant race. Cincinnati has something to win as a team. And now Pete Rose generating some excitement with the Cincinnati Reds on the road as well as at home with this hitting streak. Brent, I just uh, heard from Art Adler that Rose has singled in the first inning. And he's a run a streak to 42 games. You know, I have a record that will not be broken, and no one's brought it up, and I'm surprised. I wonder if you'd agree with me. And that is Cy Young's record of uh, yeah, right. 510. <laughs> you'd need, you would need an iron arm, two iron arms, to ever do that. And I, That's it. That is an unbelievable record. And, of course, um, that record will never be broken. Uh, it's going to be interesting now to see how Pete Rose does trying to uh, catch Joe D, and I'm sure Joe D's very interested in it. In fact, there was an article in the paper about uh, a catch his brother made in a game oh, against right, the Boston right. Red Sox when DiMaggio hit a ball, and his brother made a spectacular catch. But the last time up in that ball game, DiMaggio got a double in Boston to extend the uh, hitting streak. But uh, he said his brother has kidded him a great deal about that, and his brother said, I could not go another step after that ball. But um, once again, an unbelievable record. And uh, I'm speaking from experience because um, <laughs> yeah. I, my best uh, hitting streak was three games, and I felt a lot of pressure, too. Well, everyone laughs about things like that, but there are a lot of people who never hit in three straight games, <laughs> never got to the major league, which you did. Um, Atlanta and Montreal split a doubleheader last night. Get these scores in quickly. San Francisco defeated Chicago. 9-8, that was the completion of the suspended game. Then the, the uh, Cubs shut out San Francisco 1-0. San Diego beat St. Louis 8-3, and the Dodgers over Pittsburgh 7-3. Uh, the Phillies have a five-game lead over the Cubs, a seven-game lead over Pittsburgh, and the uh, the race in the National League West, Franny, is really tightened up. Your old ball club, San Francisco, a one-game lead over L.A. and a two-game lead over Cincinnati, and maybe that's the most exciting development of this season, the rebirth of baseball in San Francisco. I know you can recall when they said it can't go in the Bay Area, not two teams. Bill Madlock told me last year, not even one team. And he's playing for the Giants, and that's wrong. And it's, that's interesting because I played out there. In 1971, the Giants won the division. They drew a million fans. The following year, they traded Willie Mays. They traded Gaylord Perry for Sam McDowell and Frank Duffy. Sam McDowell came up with a bad arm, so the ball club suffered. It finished down in the standing. The people did not turn out. The weather is bad. The night games are very difficult to sit through. And of course, like you say, our rebirth in the Bay Area. They are starting to draw some people. Um, of course, I believe it's the pitching. And it's the pitching that has made the San Francisco Giants a pleasant surprise in the Western Division of the National League. Uh, once again, we get back to the theory, good pitching will beat good hitting anytime. being told about the press conference that's going on, Fran. Uh, you're right about the, the pitching. You know, sometimes uh, you've heard a lot of baseball teams knock for spending money on free agents. And and yet sometimes uh, that one player can turn things around. Not that the one player can win for you, because baseball is a component game of, of 25 parts working together. But I can give you two clubs where one man has, has been the key to turning it around. Larry Heisel with Milwaukee and by the blue with the Giants. The Giants have a tremendous pitching staff. They've got Lavelle and Moffitt in the bullpen, and they've got the four strong starters with Blue and Montefusco and, and Bob Nepper and Ed Halicki, but, but Blue probably was the, the key in, in that yeah. team. Excellent point. Vida Blue might be a catalyst for the San Francisco Giants, probably the only pitcher that could act as a catalyst. He's a, a successful pitcher, a byproduct of success is confidence, he brought confidence to San Francisco when he was traded over there, started to win, believed in himself and in the San Francisco Giants, and now the Giants believe in themselves. Like, uh, they have their work cut out for them. They get the Cincinnati Reds, a difficult machine to stop, and also the Los Angeles Dodgers. The things that the Dodgers and the Reds have on their side that the Giants do not have, those two ball clubs have been through tough pennant races before. Right now, also August. September, the real tough month for a contending ball club. The Yankees went through it last year. It helped them going through it the year before. They picked up guys like Jackson who have been on pennant winners. They knew what it took to win. I think it's going to help the Yankees this year. It'll help the Dodgers. It'll help the Reds. And of course, a very close pennant race or division race in the Western Division of the National League. 
Well, Brian, before we give out the lineups for today, the Twins and the Yankees, Ken Clay and Daryl Jackson, two young pitchers, why don't you bring the fans up to date on the scores, the games that are going on uh, today. Okay, fine. The uh, Red Sox and uh, and Royals are up in Fenway Park. Scores at the end of one. Dennis Leonard and Jim Wright. Wright, the young right-hander for the Red Sox. And uh, the Pesky Blue Jays have another lead over Milwaukee. They lead 2 nothing at the end of six. John Mayberry has his 16th home run. Detroit scored four in the bottom of the first. They lead Seattle 4-1. to Chicago has a 2 nothing lead at the end of one over Texas. Oakland, uh, Cleveland, California, Baltimore will both play tonight. National League with uh, games on the coast and night games has begun only one game. Cincinnati has a 2 nothing lead over Philadelphia at the end of one. George Foster is having another great season. He had his 24th home run. He was on that giant team, too. A very unknown, undiscovered player. One of the, that's one of the all-time trades. Well, that's an interesting trade because I'll never forget that day. They had a pitcher, the San Francisco Giants had a pitcher named Rich Roberts. Big right-hander, threw well. Did not get four, did not get three years in the major league, but, but has been accused of not playing with a full deck of cards. <laughs> and what happened was, on that particular date, they were sitting in the dugout. Rich Robertson had on the earphones to the radio. George Foster was very content in San Francisco. In fact, he loved it because of Willie Mays, oh. Willie McCovey. Oh. Uh, they were very close, and George, a real introvert at the time. George, sitting in the dugout next to Rich Robertson, and Robertson turned to George and said, congratulations. And he shook his hand. George said, for what? He said, you just betrayed it that it slipped out of your head. And it was really a traumatic thing for George because he broke down. At the time, the Giants were leading right. uh, the Western Division of the National League by 10 games. And, of course, he was leaving his friends. And George was quite shaken up over the thing, but uh, come back and had tremendous seasons with the Cincinnati Reds and a fine individual. Had a few seasons ago, a great decision by Sparky Anderson to, to move Pete Rose from left field to third base. A lot of players would complain about being moved out of a position, but Rose undertook it, and they put Foster in left field, and ever since then, Foster's been just about the best slugger in the major leagues. It's a tough move, and I, I'm sure uh, Sparky Anderson is happy he has a guy like Pete Rose that he can discuss a move like this, tell him it's better for the ball club. If you move, we can get Foster in the outfield. We can get his bat in the lineup. And I'm sure Pete Rose, as competitive as he is, in a way he the wants to win those world championships, would agree to it. But today, Fran, uh, the Yankees and Twins in game number two of the series. The Yankees lost a very tough game last night. In fact, I was uh, driving back from the beach and listening uh, to you uh, on the air along with uh, Bill and Frank uh, a lot of stages of that game. And when Nettles hit that double in the eighth inning, I thought, ah, from here, they're going to win. I think whenever you think that, though, something always happens to turn it around. You can't really guess in baseball, but uh, the Yankees came through with the clutch hits by Reggie and Greg in the eighth inning, and I, I would think that, that you would have thought that from here on that that game the Yankees would win it and was turned around in the tenth inning. Well, like uh, other sports, for example, football, momentum is a very important part of baseball. I thought that the Yankees stopped the Twins' momentum with the two runs to tie the ball game at five apiece. I felt that they now had the momentum. Of course, Lyle threw the slider out over the plate to Norwood. A pretty good pitch, but Norwood hit the ball, and it looked to me like the wind was blowing towards right field. In fact, we did not, I believe Scooter was on the air at the time with me, and, and, and we did not think the ball was going to carry over that right field fence. It surprised us. It did. It surprised everybody else. We, we were shocked, but the Twins went on. They won that ball game 7-5, and the Twins, if they have that, if you're going to select a strong point on the Twins' ball club, you're going to have to say it's the offense. They have a good offensive ball club. In fact, when I came into the American League in 1973, I felt the Twins had the best offensive club in the American League. And, of course, this has been their trademark throughout the years, offense. Right. Some teams breed pitchers and other teams breed hitters. And Minnesota keeps breeding hitters. They keep losing hitters. Lyman Bostock and Larry Heisel, they... And, and their best platoon is the left-handed platoon, and that's the platoon that Kenny Clay will see today. Uh, Bram will give you the lineup for today's game, which will begin momentarily in about 60 seconds right after this message. 
Cohoes Tobacco Company has more to offer than the name implies. They carry one of the largest inventories of all Zenith products in the Tri-City area. Color and black and white TVs, table models and console stereos and video cassette recorders. And all TVs are delivered free of charge within the Tri-City area by servicemen who adjust each set specifically to your location. Cohoes Tobacco Company has its own service department on the premises, and they therefore personally guarantee and personally stand behind each and every Zenith product they sell. Nine-inch diagonal battery-operated black and white and portable black and white 12 and 19 inch diagonal TVs, Zenith portable stereo with AM, FM stereo radio, record player and cassette or 8 track tape with play and record, all available at Cohoes Tobacco Company's everyday low prices. Stop in and check out all the Zenith products at Cohoes Tobacco Company, centrally located in downtown Cohoes at 60 Rumson Street. Open Monday noon till 5, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Saturday 9 till 5.30 and Friday nights till 9. Okay, now let's take five seconds for station identification on a New York Yankee radio network. You're listening to 1460 WOKO, Albany. John Sterling and Fran Healy at Yankee Stadium. The Yankees and uh, Twins, game number two of the four-game series. A doubleheader tomorrow starting at one. And with Ken Clay, a right-hand pitcher starting for the Yanks. Gene Mock has his left-handed platoon in there. With Hopkins Powell leading off in left field, he's hitting... 239. Roy Smalley, who's having a tremendous offensive year, the switch hitting shortstop will bat second. Smalley hitting 273 with 11 homers and 47 RBIs, and he had a home run last night. The league's premier hitter, Rod Carew, will bat third at first base. Carew is hitting 336. Mike Cubbage, who's having a tremendous year for the Twins, one of the, the hitters that Minnesota Breeze were talking about. Cubbage hitting 315. Good strong left hand hitter. Line drive hitter. Rich Childs will be in right field batting fifth. He's hitting 297. The designated hitter will hit sixth. Glenn Adams. Adams hitting 250. The hero of last night's game for the Twins. Dan Ford is sitting out today's game. Willie Norwood will play center field. Norwood is hitting 267. Rob Wilfong will uh, play second base and bat eighth. He's hitting at 275. They're resting Butch Weiniger today, and Glenn Borgman, a right-hand hitter, will catch. Borgman, not having much of a year with the bat, is hitting at 187. And a little left-handed, Darryl Jackson will pitch. He's 3-3. Three and three. His ZRA is 3.28. Uh, and, Fran, if I'm memory serves, I don't mean to throw you a curve. I believe you saw Jackson in Minnesota last time. We did. He's off to uh, the campus of Arizona State. I believe he pitched one ball game in the minor leagues, and that was a no-hitter. So, of course... With that success, they call him up, and uh, he throws well. He throws four pitches. I talked to Glenn Borgman before the ball game, and uh, he throws all four pitches, and he's a, a colorful character, uh, uh, colorful in, in a way that he moves around out on the mound, uh, uh, similar to the bird. Of course, you have to be successful to pull those antics on the mound, but uh, from what the Twins say about Daryl Jackson, he's going to be a fine pitcher. The Yankees will start Mickey Rivers and lead him off in center field. Mickey's hitting 255, and Willie Randolph will bat second and play second base, and by coincidence, Randolph is also hitting 255. Thurman Munson will DH today and bat third. He's hitting 295. Lou Pinella batting fourth in left field at 314. Chris Chambliss will bat fifth, hitting up at 285. Reggie Jackson in right field batting sixth, hitting at 273. Greg Nettles will bat 7th hitting 258. The Yankees have clustered their left hand hitters. Jackson is a left hander. The Yankees are hitting Chambliss, Jackson, and Nettles together. Mike Heath will bat 8th and catch. He's hitting at 290. And uh, Fred Stanley will continue to play short. He's going to bat ninth, but he's hitting at 220. Right now I want to congratulate really as I have for the past 7 years I get a chance to, uh, to visit with you as Frank Messer is on the field doing the MC work and Frank you're a pro and you've always done a good job, but today you did your best job because today the startling emotional developments, and I just congratulate you. I thought you handled everything marvelously. At first with the when Al Rosen was booed because of what had happened in the week, then with Billy Martin being reintroduced, and I congratulate you. Well, thank you very much, John, and uh, I've got to say this, and the people I'm talking to will not hear it because they're here in the stands. 
And even though uh, Al Rosen received some booze, there were chants that we want, Billy. I think the fans are to be congratulated for keeping their cool. And in so doing, they were, I think, justly rewarded when it was announced that Billy Barnes would return in 1980 as manager of the Yankees. And I'm just, uh, uh, people listening at home, when their uh, friends and neighbors and people they know came to the ballpark, I hope they all tell them I said that, because I think we had just a great crowd of people here at the stadium. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. It's the nearest sellout crowd. Frank, you have returned, as we you know, fill the time here between the two, I understand that you have returned from the press conference, and you might inform our listeners that we'll hear it on the news today, but you might be able to tell them a little bit more of what happened, what transpired. Well, I listened, really. I wasn't at the press conference in body, John. I listened uh, uh, from the television booth, and we did have a microphone down there from uh, TV. The, the main thing, the biggest thing to me as I sit here and think of it, and the full impact, of course, won't uh, hit until much later on, the biggest thing were two great admissions. One by George Steinbrenner, the owner of the Yankees, that uh, he had uh, done things in the past that he wasn't proud of, and he knew he'd have to live with them. And the other was an admission by Billy Martin that he actually, in fact, did say the things that he was quoted as saying mm -hmm. in Chicago. Uh, Billy at first uh, denied that. At the press conference, he said he did say it. He also said, I don't know why I said it. Uh, perhaps, and I believe the word he used was uh, uh, emotion, uh, in an act of emotion that he did it. We'll have the exact wording when we get a transcript of the press conference. But to me, those were the two big things. The two main people now, and I don't care what anybody says, uh, Billy Martin is going to be with the Yankees. He's going to be regarded as a, certainly a main thought, uh, admitting that uh, he did say what he said, that he apologized to George Steinbrenner. George Steinbrenner said, in effect, let's let it be forgotten, which it won't be, of course, but let's start a new season as of today. He didn't use that word, but that was his intent. Let today be the beginning. So a new season starts today, John, for the Yankees. The only difference is they're eight games behind to start the season. Well, and there is definitely a pennant race. If people give up on baseball pennant races far too early, Frank, and we both know that. Well, Ken Clay is set to pitch, and Hoskin Powell will lead off of the Twins. Uh, Gene Mock has the left-handed platoon in, and I give you Frank Messer to do uh, the play-by-play, -play, and who knows if the Yankees won't catch up in the next two months. <laughs> okay, John, thank you very much, and our thanks to John Sterling for certainly sitting in here and doing the fine job he has done every year on Old Timers Day with us. Hoskin Powell, left-hand hitter. The first pitch from play is high. We're back to baseball. Ball one. Balls and strikes, outs and runs scored. High foul is peeled out of play in the upper deck on the left side. Souvenir for the fans. No matter how the fans feel about what goes on, they still go helter-skelter after the foul ball. That's a good sign. Paul, a 239 hitter, takes a fastball low and in, and the count is two balls and a strike. Waiting on deck, shortstop Roy Smalley. Kenny Clay rocks and deals. High fly ball to sit down the left field line. Panella is digging and will not be able to get to it. Foul ball. Ball fell into the seats foul, and the count is two and two on Hoskin Powell. Just underway, following the old-timer ceremony, it's a very dramatic announcement that were made. And again, we'll uh, touch on the various aspects of the press conference, the announcements that were made during the old-timer ceremonies as we go along. The two-and-two two pitch to Hoskin Paul. Here it comes, and he lines it through the right side base set. Chambliss made a dive, could reach it, and Paul is on with a leadoff single. Well, the Twins have their first man on, and they bring up Roy Smalley, a switch-hitting shortstop. Smalley is batting 273, and last night hit his 11th home run of the year. He hit it as a left-hand batter off Yankee starter Dick Tidrow, and he hit it his first time up. Smalley leads the Minnesota Twins in home runs with 11. Fouls a pitch back. Took a big rip. Kenny Clay on the mound for the Yankees is making his fifth start. 
And his 24th appearance. Make that his 20th appearance. And his fifth start. He's relieved 15 times. Pitched a total of 40 and one-third innings to an ERA of 5.58. Pitch comes in low as Smalley that time squared off to Bunt. And the count goes to one ball, one strike. Play in 40 and a third innings has allowed 54 hits. He has walked 15, struck out 18. He, like Jim Beatty, is going to a new delivery, no windup. Of course, now the set with the runner on, and the pitch is butted foul. Smalley squared off before the pitch, just stuck the bat out, let the ball hit it, and it carried back foul. No score, just underway, top half of the first inning. The Twins have a man on, nobody out. The Yankees set up a double play depth. Nettles backs off at third base now with two strikes on the left hand hitting Smalley. And the pitch is hit on the ground. Right side gets by Randolph in a right field base set. Powell stops at second in deference to the throwing arm of Reggie Jackson. And the Twins have something going. Runners at first and second and nobody out. Rod Carew will be the batter. The Yankees outfield is Pinella in left, Rivers in center, and Jackson in right. Around the infield, Nettles at third, Chambliss at first, and in between, Stanley at short, and Randolph at second. The catcher is Mike Heath. Thurman Munson is playing this afternoon, but as the designated hitter. The umpires around from home plate Steve Palermo at first base Don Denkinger at second base Dave Phillips and at third base Larry McCoy. Now Nettles is in on the grass with Carew up there. Carew an excellent butter. Runners at first and second and he swings away. Hits a fly ball to left center field. It is deep but Rivers will be back under it. Makes the catch. The lead runner Powell is tagged. Heading for third after the catch. The throw comes into second. One out and the Twins have runners at first and third. Ball was it deep enough that Powell could tag up and go to third easily as Rivers' throw came into second base to keep Smalley at first and keep the double play situation alive. The batter will be third baseman Mike Cubbage. Cubbage is hitting 315. He suddenly elevated himself into one of the leading hitters in the American League. Really, Fran Healy, this young man coming out of nowhere. Oh, yes, he did, Frank. Uh, of course, good fastball hitters face primarily the right-handed pitcher. I believe Gene Mock will give consideration to leaving him in the lineup against the left-handers. Mock's a big platoon man, but told me in Minnesota if the left-hander can prove he can hit the left-handed pitcher, he will let him face him. All right, he's got a big shot right now with runners first and third. The infield a double play depth and a strike call over the outside corner. Play with a fastball. Cubbage, night before last, hit for the cycle. In the Twins game, single, double, triple, and home run. He's hit five home runs, 41 runs butted in. Pitch to him comes down low for a ball. It's one and one. Big early game situation for Ken Clay with runners at first and third and one away. Clay takes the sign from Heath. Now he's ready to work. Very short stretch. Drops the hands. The kick and the pitch. Cut out and bounce to the second baseman Randolph. They go to second for one. Back to first. He's safe from the run scores. Ball was not hit hard enough to be a good double play ball. Smalley is forced out at second. Cubbage beats the throw back to first base and drives in a run. The Twins go out in front one to nothing. Rich Childs will step in. For Cubbage, the run batted in is his 42nd of the year. Rich Childs, left hand batter, batting 294, takes a curve down low. Cubbage at first, two outs.
They stretch again. Kicks and delivers. The ball is hit in the air to left field. Lou Pinella back pedals. Now turns around and runs back under it and makes the catch over his head. That ball carried a little farther than Pinella thought it would, but he stayed with it and put it away. The Twins get one and leave one. At the end of one half inning, it's Minnesota one, and the Yankees are cutting the bat. What's the secret behind Wendy's hot and juicy hamburgers? It's no secret at all. At Wendy's, we use fresh meat instead of frozen meat. We think it's juicier. We make our patties fresh each and every morning. Harder on us, juicier for you. We serve every hamburger hot off the grill, never pre-cooked or warmed over. At Wendy's, hot and juicy is not a slogan. It's the way we make our hamburgers. Know what it takes? A lot of extra work and a lot of good people. Come on in and try Wendy's old-fashioned hamburgers. Juicy meat, juicy toppings, and lots of napkins. Wendy's, 1335 Central Avenue, just east of Colony Center, 741 New Loudon Road, just south of the Circle, 3 Clifton Country Road, opposite the entrance to Clifton Country Ball, and coming soon to Glenville. Wilson Sabbaths of Quakertown, PA. How long do you want your car to last? Well, I'll tell you, with inflation the way it is, I'd like it to last forever. I have over 93,000 miles on it now. Never spend a dime for any engine repair. I keep it tuned, and I've used Quaker State Oil exclusively since I bought the car. America's best-selling motor oil can't promise everyone that mileage, but Quaker State helps cars last, and that's a fact. Change to Quaker State. Quaker State helps cars last. A reminder, the Yankees and the Twins tangle again tomorrow afternoon in a doubleheader beginning at 1. That twin bill includes the makeup of an earlier rainout. Then the Texas Rangers make their last visit of the season to the stadium, Monday and Tuesday nights at 8. And right here, the Twins scored one run in the top of the first on two hits. And the Yankees were sent to the plate. Mickey Rivers, Willie Randolph, and Thurman Munson to face Daryl Jackson, who's 3-3 three and three on the year, right off the campus of Arizona State. I tell you, this is the kid, Fran Healy. They signed off the campus of Arizona State, sending down to Orlando in the Florida State League. And the first uh, time out, he pitched nine innings, gave up no runs, no hits, and did not get a decision. <laughs> So how about that, pitching a nine-hitter for nine innings, no-hitter for nine innings, and not get a decision. Obviously, the Orlando Twins did not score a run either, but it was quite a debut for this uh, left-hander. He's ready to work to Mickey Rivers, leading off of the Yankees. The wind-up by the left-hander and the pitch. Mickey takes it up high. Rivers is hitting 255 with five home runs, 26 runs batted in. 1-0 delivery from Jackson. A fastball is swung out and missed. 1-1. One and one. Yeah, Jackson, after that first game, uh, might have thought about going back for his doctorate at Arizona State. Hmm. Swing and a miss. Strike two. At least they'd score a run for me out here. <laughs> but he has made it to the major leagues in his first year pro ball. He delivers one and two, and Rivers takes up high. Breaking ball, count as two balls and two strikes. Jackson would remind you of uh, Tom Hall, who pitched for the Minnesota Twins. Left-hander, thin, good overpowering fastball. Two-two pitches, boss foul back behind the plate. You're right, that, that was a kid that uh, Tom Hall, what was he, about six feet tall, weighed 120 pounds, right? <laughs> He stood sideways, you couldn't see him. <laughs> you stay down south, you stood sideways, you wouldn't cast a shadow. But he could get it up there with some giddy up. Hmm. 2-2 two -two pitch to Rivers, strike three call. Rivers is caught looking and called out. One of the few times you'll see Rivers called out on strikes. Mickey is an aggressive hitter. He'll swing at 10 pitches out of the strike zone for every one he takes in the strike zone. But he is called out on strikes, one down, and Willie Randolph will step in. 
Randolph is hitting 255, three home runs, 23 runs batted in. Right hand batter. And the pitch curveball is over, strike one. The third baseman, Mike Cubbage, plays an even with the bag and very tight over toward the bag. Everybody else straight away. The outfielder spread. And an off speed pitch high and away, one and one. The left fielder, Rich Childs, respects Randolph. He's playing him very deep. Randolph has good power to right field. 1 1 pitch, high and away. Two balls and one strike. Thurman Munson is the on deck hitter. The Twins lead 1 to nothing here in the bottom half of the first inning. Very eventful day in New York Yankee history. 2 1 pitch, strike over the outside corner. 2 and 2. In all the excitement of Buddy Martin rejoining the Yankees. I don't think we have mentioned the fact that it was also announced today that Al Rosen has been granted a five-year contract as president of the Yankees. 2-2 pitch is low and inside, 3-2. and two. <clears throat> The payoff pitch on the way. Down low, ball four. Randolph works his way on with a walk. And it'll bring up Thurman Munson. Thurman Munson is the designated hitter this afternoon. He is batting 295. Five home runs and 47 runs batted in. Not a sellout here at Yankee Stadium, but a big crowd. Few empty seats in the upper decks in left and right field, but not that many. Everything else seems to be jam-packed except for the left field bleachers. Right field bleachers almost full. Randolph at first and Jackson to Munson is high and tight ball one. Always a big day. Old timers day. It is. It's a thrilling day and uh, just a thrill to see the old timers come back. Be able to shake hands again with Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, Ali Reynolds, Vic Rashi. How's that for name dropping? <laughs> what a pitch it through the left side. Base hit. Munson waited on the curveball and pulled it through the left side of the infield. Randolph stops at second, and the Yankees have something going. The batter will be Lou Fidella with two on and one guy. Fidella is hitting 314. Three home runs, 34 runs batted in. That, incidentally, was Thurman Munson's 115th base hit. He leads the Yankees in base hits. Chris Chambliss has 110. And Chambliss will move on deck as Panella steps in at the plate. The Twins lead one to nothing. The Yankees have a chance to pick up a run or two here. With Randolph, good speed at second. Munson, who can hustle at first. And Lou Panella. The infield tightens up around second with a shortstop Smalley and the second baseman Wilfong, both playing straight up the middle. The pitch to Lou, curve is hit through the left side, base hit. They're going to wave Randolph home, here he comes, he will score. And it's off tied up one to one as Lou Pinella drills the ground ball shortly. Past the shortstop, Roy Smalley, to tie the ball game up with his 35th run batted in this year. Munson stopped at second. Well, it is a one-to-one -one ball game, and Chris Chambliss is the batter. Chambliss is hitting 285 with six home runs and 53 RBIs. He swings at a curve and bounces it. Fair ball, pass first, down toward the right field corner. Here comes Munson. Bonilla's on his way to third. Chambliss holds at first base with an RBI single. And the Yankees lead two-to-one. Frank, here, to, here it is again in the monitor. Shambles got a ball down low, slapped it down at first baseline, just in the fair territory out of the reach of Rod Carew. Ball hit off the wall as Munson comes around to score. Powell picks it up and gets it in. And Gene Mock is on his way out to the mound. He does not have anybody throwing in his bullpen at the moment. Right. 
Frank, right now I'm sure Mark wants to calm Jackson down. Big crowd in Yankee Stadium. I'd like to go out and just calm the youngster down. And there's a break in the action with the score in New York, too. Minnesota, one. This is Mal Allen. You know they say nobody can carry Willie Randolph's glove. Well, Emery's flight pack can probably carry his glove and Metal's glove and Paul Blair's, too. And that's because, unlike a lot of other small package services, the Emory flight pack takes up to five pounds. Emory, the Air Force, and Air Freight. Reggie Jackson is the batter. Reggie is hitting 273, 15 home runs, and a team leading 55 runs batted in. Runners first and third, one out. Jackson to Jackson, swing and a miss on a fastball. That pitch was moving. Mark Mayfield, Darrell Jackson, his pitcher, to lay off the breaking ball. That's what the Yankees have been hitting. You got a fastball, young man. You better throw it. No balls and one strike on Reggie with Canella at third, Chambliss at first. The Yankees are leading two to one. Now the Twins have activity going in their bullpen. It looks like Gary Serum, just a quick glance out there, right-hander. The 0-1 pitch, low outside, a ball and a strike. One out, two on. Runners on the corners. The infield a double play depth. The outfield spread out for Jackson with the right fielder deep. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Move the fastball by him again. A ball and two strikes. Pitch coming down low, and the count is two and two. The scoreboard shows two outs, but unless I missed one somewhere, and I don't think I did, there's only one away with a count of two balls and two strikes. You miss a ball or a strike sometimes, but if I start missing outs or runs scored, <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> one away, runners first and third. Darrell Jackson's pitch to Reggie, swung on and missed, and now there are two out. <laughs> Luke Bonetta trying to sneak home, and he is thrown out at the plate. Boy, how about that move? Bonetta trying to sneak home after Jackson struck out, and he is out at the plate to retire the side. The Yankees get two runs and leave a man on, and at the end of one, it's the Yankees two and the Twins one. has been Reggie Jackson's greatest triumph. Breaking the Babes record? Being named series MVP? Well, how about getting that delicious new candy named after him? The Reggie Bar? Come on. Just think, Phil, to see your name on one of the greatest candies in America, Reggie. To know that every time someone bites at a chewy caramel, crunchy peanuts, and smooth chocolatey coating, he lives that World Series excitement all over again. Gee, that's beautiful. Let's see the Reggie now. Now, but who will announce the game? Who do you think? Oh, Bill! Well, Luke Bonilla with the pitcher Jackson stepping off the mound, decided to try to steal home and was out easily at the plate. 
I, I had to chuckle over official scorer Dick Young's announcement. After the inning was over, he said, Benalla is out one, two, caught stealing, and he said, I guess that's a double play. <laughs> First pitch here to the left hand hitting Glenn Adams is peeled foul back to the left side for strike one. Frank on the Major League scoreboard. No score in Boston. Kansas City at Boston after three. Toronto four. Milwaukee two after seven. Pitch misses for a ball. The count evens up one and one on the left hand hitting child. Uh, Adams rather. Glenn Adams a 250 hitter. Kenny Clay deals high. Detroit 8, Seattle 1 after 3, Chicago 3, Texas nothing after 3 and a half. Oakland at Cleveland, California, Baltimore night game. All right, the 2-1 pitch is coming, and it is high outside for ball 3. Unless we let it get lost and everything else is going on today, Pete Rose got a base hit his first time up, and he has now hit in 42 consecutive games. He singled his first time at bat. 3-1 pitch. Strike over the outside corner. It is three and two. In Cincinnati, it's the red six. The Phillies nothing after three. Payoff pitch coming here to Adams. He hits a ground ball to the right side of Willie Randolph. He scoops it up and throws on the first in time. One out. Now let's take five seconds for station identification on the New York Yankee Radio Network. You're listening to 1460 WOKO Albany. Hey, I'm glad you made that station break call. You're going to make all of them from now on. I got caught last night, and I haven't heard the last of it. <laughs> People have been on me all day explaining to me that one station break a half hour is enough. I don't have to get one in every three minutes. <laughs> Willie Norwood is the batter, and he takes the pitch outside for a ball. It was Willie Norwood who won the ball game last night for the Twins with a home run over the right center field fence off Sparky Lyle in the 10th. Next pitch is foul back, and that will make the upper deck. Norwood showing exceedingly good power to the opposite field. He's a 268 hitter, and last night's game-winning homer was his fifth home run of the year. He has 30 runs batted in. Play delivers, and the pitch is lined to right base hit. Over Chambliss' head, Jackson bobbles it, picks it up, and still bobbles it, but Norwood had stopped. Reggie just couldn't get the handle on it. He had to pick it up three times before he could throw the ball back to the infield, but Norwood had stopped and had no chance to try to move on. Single for Norwood, the third hit for Minnesota, and the batter is Rob Wilfong, the second baseman. Wilfong is the left-hand hitter. Norwood. Down at first, the pitch. He bluffed a butt, took a fastball outside. It's ball one. Glenn Borkman is on deck. Throw to first. He's safe. One out, one on. One ball, no strikes. On uh, left hand hitting Rob Wilfong, a 275 hitter. Another throw to first, and Norwood is safe again. Wilfong has hit one home run and has seven runs batted in for the year. The 1 0 delivery, strike call, letter high. Big crowd, of course, for this, the Yankees' 32nd annual Old-Timers Day. Fans were treated to the Old-Timers game and ceremonies. 1-1 pitch, upside. Also treated to the announcement that Billy Martin has returned to the Yankees. He will act in an advisory capacity through the rest of this year and all of next year and again will become manager of the Yankees in 1980. At which time, Bob Lemon, now the manager of the Yankees, will become general manager of the Yankees. Runner going, the pitch is low, the throw to second, he's safe. Willie Norwood steals second. It is his 21st stolen base of the year. He has been caught only eight times.
He's throw tail a little bit off to the first base side. Norwood with a head first slide was in. Three and one pitch down coming. Foul back by Will Fong and the count is full at three and two. Delightful weather for this old timers day here in New York. 3-2 pitch from Clay. Hit on the ground of the shortstop. That'll hold the runner at second. Stanley's throw to first. He's safe. Rough on. Beat it out. That's the base hit that the umpire says he's Boy, Dick Young is feeling exceedingly good today. You may have heard that announcement. That's a base hit. If the umpire says he's safe. And the umpire says he's safe, so <laughs> that's a base hit. And Dick Young, you got that right. <laughs> Oh, that was a slow-hit ground ball at Stanley. Charged by Will Fong. Showed great speed getting down the line. Picked himself up a hit, as Dick Young said. All right, base hit number four for the Twins. Runners first and second, one out. And Glenn Borgman steps in, right-hand hitter. Borgman, the catcher, is batting only 187, two home runs, eight RBIs. He has been to bat but 75 times with Butch Weininger doing most of the catching for the Twins. Clay is 1-0 pitch to him. Had the plate low. Two balls and no strike. And Frank, I can assure you Glenn Borgman feels very uncomfortable at the plate. Clay very little. Very difficult to go in the ball game like this and produce offensively. Defensively, not as, de not as difficult. Sure, it's awfully tough not uh, playing any more than he does. Great big guy. Strong. 2-0 pitch. Popped up. Down the third baseline comes Nettles. If it's a fair ball, the infield fly rule is in effect. And Nettles makes the catch in foul territory. So Borgman is out. There are two down. Runners holding. And the batter will be Hoskin Powell, who singled and scored in the first inning. A few clouds have begun to drift in now. Just a very high overcast. But by and large, just a great day. I can remember last year, Old Timers Day, we had a lot of rain here at the stadium, but we did get all the ceremonies in. Two on, two gone. Clay comes set at his pitch. Down low with a fastball. It's ball one. Cedric Tallis, who is now general manager of the Yankees, will remain with the club through 19... 80, and then will become vice president in charge of scouting. 1-0 pitch. On the outside corner, a strike. It's 1-1. One one. Mr. Thomas will conduct his operations at that time from his home in Kansas City. Two outs, two on. The Yankees lead 2-1. Clay sets, checks second base for the lead runner, Norwood. The pitch is hit in the air to left center field. Fanella is there and makes the catch to retire the side. At the end of one and a half, the score. The Yankees 2 and the Twins 1. Listen to the Yankees here on OK Country or on your way to the Bronx to see the Bombers at the stadium, you know you're going to build up a big appetite. Nothing goes better with baseball than a big Dom sub. Just as you never get tired of rooting for the Yanks, you'll never get tired of big Dom subs. That's because there's so many delicious varieties to choose from, 37 in all. Whether you choose a mixed cold cut, a turkey, a shrimp torpedo, you know you're getting the best. Bakery fresh rolls, baked especially for Big Dom, are stacked high with garden fresh lettuce, tomatoes, and the filling you choice. Big Dom makes those great hot subs, too. Meatball, sausage, veal, and peppers topped with specially seasoned homemade sauces that make my mouth water just thinking about them. And be sure to try our brand new Little Joe Hot Deli Delights. Nine new sandwiches served hot on a sesame seed roll. Try Little Joe's Hot Barbecue Beef with that tangy secret sauce. There's no way you can beat the great taste of a Big Dom sub or a Little Joe's Hot Deli Delight. But get the real McCoy at one of our eight great Big Dom sub shops. If we had more locations, just like the New York Yankees, We'd be world champions, too. 
With a break in the action, if you're headed for the refrigerator, give it a second look. If you need a new one, come to Swire Appliance. Right now, they're offering some tremendous values on Frigidaires. For instance, a big 17 cubic foot two-door Frigidaire refrigerator freezer with the lowest energy consumption rating of any refrigerator freezer on the market for only $399. Swire Appliance, 14 South Pearl Street, Albany. Open 9.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. Closed Saturdays during July and August. Swire Appliance. Bottom of the second here at Yankee Stadium. Nettle steps in the face. The left-handed throwing Daryl Jackson. Frank? First pitch to him. Curve is swung on and missed. Good-looking curveball from Jackson. Greg Nettles is hitting 258. Team leading 17 home runs, and he has 51 runs about it in. Takes a pitch outside. Greg knocked in three runs in the Yankees' 7-5 loss ni- last night. He doubled to tie the ball game at 5-5, five to five, driving in two. 1-1 one, one pitch, swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes. White Sox have jumped out in front of the Texas Rangers 6 nothing. They're in the fifth inning at Comiskey Park. And the 1-2 to Nettles. Line to right field, base set. Darrell Jackson got the curveball up, and Nettles jumped on it. That is the Yankees' fourth hit. The Yankees lead to the one, and Mike Heath, the batter, looks to see if they're going to have him bunt. And they let Heath swing away. Fred Stanley batting behind him has not been swinging the bat that well. And they let him swing, and he fouls one back. Heath not only fouled the ball off, he lost the bat, came back to the box seats near the third base dugout. And as he chases his bat to some scores, no score after three in Boston, the Royals against the Red Sox. Toronto four, Milwaukee three after eight. Heath is hitting 290, looking for his first major league home run. And now Darrell Jackson steps off. Heath has been up 62 times with 18 hits. Three doubles, one triple. There goes Nettles. The pitch is cut on and bounced to the third baseman. The throw to first. Howell throw back to third as Nettles keeps going, and he's safe at third. Boy, some got a base running by Greg Nettles. He broke with the pitch. The ball was a high bouncer to the third baseman, Savage, who threw on the first, and Nettles never slowed down. Frank, if that was a hit and run, Nettles had the best jump I've ever seen on a hit and run. Got to believe he might he might have been trying to steal that base. An excellent move on his part since all the way to third base. I'm surprised more ball players did not make that play. For example, on the bunt, when the ball is bunted to the third baseman and the runner is in motion, when the third baseman picks up the ball, I'm surprised a lot of runners stop at second and just don't proceed to third. All right, Brad, runner at third now, only one out. The infield is in. Stanley up with a squeeze, and he bunts. Nettles will score. The throw to first base, and Stanley is saved. Throw got away from the pitcher, Jackson. A base hit for Stanley. A run got it in, and the Yankees lead 3-1. to one. The suicide squeeze was on as Nettles broke for the plate. Stanley bunted off the first base side of the mound. The ball was fielded by Carew, through to the pitcher, Jackson covering. He could not handle the throw. Stanley was safe at first base, a base hit, a run batted in. So the Yankees with a 3-1 to lead, and Mickey Rivers is the batter. Rivers was called out on strikes in the first inning. Swings and misses, strike one. You know, Fran, I already seen a Nettles go from first to third in that bouncer. I'll tell you a guy who used to do that, and used to do it very often. In the ballpark today, wearing a uniform and hadn't been retired that long, Tony Oliva of the Twins. He would take that extra base. Now, that's interesting because Oliva had bad legs, but still ran rather well. How about early in his career? And the ball is bunted foul by Rivers into the third base dugout. Frank, in a bunted ball, like I said, when the ball is bunted to the third baseman, if the runner gets a good break off of first, trying to steal second, and when the ball hits the ground, he's got to be close to second base. Now, 
just don't break stride. Pick, you have to gamble. Try for it. It's difficult to throw that ball from first base to third base and throw a perfect strike. On to pitch now. Rivers takes a breaking ball just off the strike zone. One and two. It's the same throw from behind the plate for the catcher to second as, as it is for the first baseman to third base. I believe it's 127 feet, three and three quarters inches. Line drive down toward the left field corner. Fair ball. They sit into the corner. Here's Sammy on his way to third. Hauser waves him home. Here he comes. And the relay to the plate is not in time. Stanley scores standing up. Rivers stops at second with a double, and the Yankees lead 4-1. Small relay by Smalley, the shortstop, who had trouble getting the ball out of his glove. Hauser was waving Stanley home all the way, and he scored standing up. Gene Mock is out to make a pitching change. Mock has already waved for a right-hander from his bullpen, and that will be all for Darrell Jackson. For Rivers, a two-base hit. A run but it in for Mickey, his 27th RBI, and his 14th double. And there's a break in the action with the score New York 4, Minnesota 1. This is Mel Allen. Thanks to Emory's computer tracking system, no matter where in the world your package is, you can always pick up a phone, call Emory, and touch base with it. Emory, the Air Force and Air Freight. Okay, a reminder. Over the past two weeks, the Yankees have picked up six games on the division-leading Boston Red Sox. They'll be trying to close the gap even more when the Red Sox come into the stadium Wednesday and Thursday nights at 8. Tickets for both of these games are now on sale at the stadium, Ticketron, and all Yankee ticket outlets. So get your tickets now and be here when the Yankees battle the Red Sox Wednesday and Thursday nights. Jerry Serum, the right-hander, on a release from Daryl Jackson. Now talking things over with his catcher, Glenn Borgman. And we'll take a look at the Major League scoreboard. Boston picked up one run in the bottom of the fourth. It's now Boston one, Kansas City nothing. Toronto four, Milwaukee three after eight from Milwaukee. Having their problems. Mayberry with his 16th home run of the year. For the Toronto Blue Jays in May. It is second home run of the year for Milwaukee. Detroit 8, Seattle 1 after 4. Chicago 6, Texas nothing after 4. Looks like the Rangers having their problems in Chicago. George Orta has homered for the White Sox his 13th in the first inning with one on. This is a surprise. Orta going to the bridge 13 times this year. Cincinnati, six. Philadelphia, nothing. That's after four and a half. And Pete Rose extended his hitting streak to 42 games. Now he's in pursuit of Joe DiMaggio. Montreal, Atlanta, night game. Pittsburgh at Los Angeles, a night game. In St. Louis at San Diego, a night game. The Cubs at San Francisco. That'll be a later start. Right here in New York. After... No, it's in the bottom of the second. The Yankees have four runs on six hits, no errors. The Twins, one run on four hits and no errors. Mickey Rivers on second base with a double. Willie Randolph steps in. Frank? Hi, Fran Hilly. Randolph walked in the first inning and scored a run. Willie has hit in seven straight games. He steps out. Time is called. Willie Randolph has hit safely in 13 of his last 14 games since coming off the disabled list. A batting average of 255. And now Serum has trouble reading Borgman's signs, and Borgman goes out to talk to the pitcher. Frank, when a pitcher first comes into the ball game, it should not be a problem because it's usually universal signs. You use them for all your pitchers. Of course, maybe Serum has an eye problem, cannot see the inside signs, so they might go with outside sign. Rivers swings and misses on an outside pitch. Now, uh, you want to explain inside and outside sign? No. Oh, right. yeah, okay. <laughs> inside signs would be the fingers. Of course, they could be difficult to pick up, so now you go with the outside signs. For example, 
the chest protector could be the curveball, the shin guard, the fastball, and the mask, a slider. Pitch is hit in the air to center field. Moving into position for it. And making the catch is center fielder Willie Norwood. Mickey Rivers tags his second, goes to third after the catch. And Frank, right now, Borgman is talking with Sarum again. On the outside signs, they're easy to pick up, not only for your pitcher, but for the opposing team. So it's best to go with the inside signs. Another problem you can have when a runner on second, you can be concerned with him stealing the sign. But, of course, this is overrated because many of the hitters that I've played with would rather not know what pitch is coming. They would rather go from scratch, either try to guess or just look for the ball. All right, runner at third, two out, seven months in the batter. And he takes the slider low outside. Munson singled to left field in the first inning and came in to score. Munson now is hit in six straight games and 15 of his last 16. Same pitch, same place, ball two. So Rosetto tells me that years ago they used to make Yogi Berra wear tape on his fingers. His fingers were so short that the infielders had trouble seeing the sign. Hmm. Pitches low outside to Thurman, and it seems that Gary Serum is pitching around him. Frank, I was never really concerned with um, the infielders seeing my signs. I was more concerned with the pitcher, especially if he threw hard. Three all pitches down low. Munson walks, and it just appears that Serum was pitching around Munson. Evidently, he'd rather pitch to Lou Pinella. Right now, we're going to have a pinch hitter for Lou Pinella, Gary Thomason. Lou Pinella, and a big collision at home plate with a strong man, Glenn Borgman, might have hurt himself. Frank, you cannot fool with those catches. Now, especially, you got all that gear on down there. It's like running into a stone wall. Most of your catches are strong. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Occasionally, a weak one comes along. Have you ever met one? No, I really haven't. <laughs> no. All right, Gary Thomason, a 240 hitter up, left hand batter, takes a strike over the outside corner. I'm sure we'll see Thomason stay in the ball game to play left field. A loud cheer just put up from the television booth. Bill Rizzuto put in an appearance. One of the rare appearances for Old Timers Day for the scooter. Obviously, he didn't shower. He has his hat on. Oh, one pitch is fouled off into the third base dugout. Now, take a double look and see if it's got a little piece of chewing gum on the <laughs> button of the cap. Has it? <laughs> chewing gum is now 33 years old. Can you believe it? He has a chewing gum. He's got it. Same chewing gum. Who says you can't leave the spearmint on the <laughs> bedpost overnight? <laughs> Runners first and third. Two outs. No no ball, two strike count, and the pitch is inside to Gary Thomason. One ball and two strikes. Um, checks the sign with Borgman. Right hander kicks it offers, and the pitch is drilled and played by the second baseman, Wilfon, who throws him out. Boy, that ball was in a ton through the right side, and Wilfon playing Thomason back on the grass, speared it, straightened up, and threw him out to retire the side. The Yankees get two and lead two, and at the end of two, it's New York four and Minnesota one. Got grease on my fingers, oil on my shoes, I'm always under the hood. But I wouldn't change places with anyone else, even if I could. I worked on every car, big and small, every kind of engine too. And there's one thing that applies to them all, whether they're old or new. You can't buy a better plug for any kind of car than champion. You can't buy a better plug no matter where you are than champion. Champion's number one in the world, they're number one in your car. Some folks don't mind working in a big place, being part of a team. I prefer just me and that engine, nobody in between. You can't buy a better plug for any kind of car than champion. You can't buy a better plug no matter where you are than champion. Champion's number one in the 
Driving in from the one you were with their number one new car. No, you can't buy better blood for any kind of car than champion. You can't buy better blood no matter where you are than champion. Come on, get the rest, get closer to me, mmm, you smell so fast, in English Leather Lime. Then get fresh with English Leather Lime from head to toe. Come on, get fresh, because... If you want to get close to her, first you got to get fresh. Come on, get the rest, get closer to me. Gary Thomason, who batted for Pinellas, stays in the ball game to play left field. And Roy Smalley will step in. The twin shortstop, batting left against Clay, takes a strike on the inside corner. Smalley is a switch hitter. He has better power as a left-hand batter. Overall, he's hitting 275, 11 home runs. The pitch is a check swing low, one and one. Smalley singled in the first inning. Plays 1-1 one, one delivery. High. Two balls and a strike. The infield shades a bit to the right side for Smalley. The outfield is straight away. Spread out. Play winds and is 2-1 pitch. Line to right. That'll be a base hit. Rolling toward the corner. Jackson chasing and Smalley is on his way to second. Here's the throw to second base. Going to be close. He's out. Big throw from Jackson to Stanley, and Smalley is out at second. And now 20 seconds for a local station to identify themselves. There's morning sickness on WOKO with Brian Jackson and Joe Gallagher, Monday through Friday morning. <laughs> for Taste of the Strange, be sure to be on hand. 1460 WOKO, Albany. A perfect throw from Reggie Jackson to Fred Stanley gets Smalley at second. One out and Carew the batter takes down low. You know while Rod Carew is hitting 336 against the entire American League, his batting average against the Yankees less than .080. Would you believe that, Fran Healy? This year, Carew has been to bat now 26 times against the Yankee pitching with a grand total of two base hits. Unbelievable. It really is. Hmm. When the game started, he was .080, and he's 0 for 1 now. He fouls this one, upper deck left side. Fran, you've got a note there in your hand or something you want to Yes, I do. Uh, we'd like to pass more on best wishes to our great Yankee fan, Joseph Falcone. Listens to all our games, Frank. He's at Beth Israel Hospital in Manhattan, so best wishes. All right, very good. We hope Joseph is up and around very soon. Two balls and a strike on Rodney Carew. Carew fly to center field his first time up in this game. The Yankees lead by a score of 4-1 to one here in the top of the third. Plays 2-1 and one pitch down low. Three balls and a strike. Clay, do, uh, Clay does not use an exaggerated wind up. However, he does pump the hands over the head and gets the pitch on the outside. Corner three and two. Lupinella left the game with a bruised left hand. We hear that Lupinella bruised his left hand in that collision trying to steal home. Three two pitches line foul into the seats in left field. Frank, you mentioned Clay's motion. It's best not to have an exaggerated motion. You lose your body control, and body control is very important when you have to throw a strike. 3-2 to Carew. Bouncing ball back toward the mound. Clay has it. Flips to first base and just does get him. I'll tell you, Clay lollipop that ball over there, and Carew almost beat it up. That surprised me right there, Frank. The ball hit right back to Clay. He had him come in a little bit, but Carew runs very well. Clay should realize this. Pick the ball up and did lollipop. You can pick that ball up and get it to the first baseman. Because if it's a bad throw, he has to handle it. It'll give him some time. That was a bang-bang play. And 
It had to be a perfect throw to get to Speedy Carew. Well, Clay will remember that and get a little more mustard on his throw next time, I'm sure. There are two outs. Nobody on, and Mike Covage, the batter, left-hand hitter. Plays pitch to him. Rides high, ball one. Covage grounded into a force play in the first inning. With a ground ball hit to Woody Randolph at second base. The Yankees are leading 4-1. to one. Play rocks and fires. Press ball knee high. Strike call. It's 1-1. One and one. We know our listening audience changes very often, especially on a Saturday afternoon, and we'll repeat the big news here at the Yankee Stadium as we get a chance. The 1-1 pitch. Check swing, a low curve. It was announced during Old Timers Day ceremonies that Billy Martin has returned to the Yankees. He'll work in an advisory capacity through this year and next year and return as field manager in 1980. The 2-1 pitch, hit on the ground, sharply right side. Willie Randolph is up with it, throws on to Chambliss to retire the side. And at the end of two and a half, it's New York 4 and Minnesota 1. Cahoe's Tobacco Company has more to offer than the name implies. They carry one of the largest inventories of all Zenith products in the Tri-City area. Color and black and white TVs, table models and console stereos and video cassette recorders. And all TVs are delivered free of charge within the Tri-City area by servicemen who adjust each set specifically to your location. Cahoe's Tobacco Company has its own service department on the premises, and they therefore personally guarantee and personally stand behind each and every Zenith product they sell. Nine-inch diagonal battery-operated black and white, and portable black and white 12 and 19-inch diagonal TVs, Zenith portable stereo with AM, FM stereo radio, record player and cassette or 8-track tape with play and record, all available at Cohoes Tobacco Company's everyday low prices. Stop in and check out all the Zenith products at Cohoes Tobacco Company, centrally located in downtown Cohoes at 60 Rumson Street. Open Monday, noon till 5, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, 9 till 5.30, and Friday nights till 9. I guess I'm lucky. My family's always been healthy. Oh, a touch of constipation now and then, but we've got x lax for that. Today, more American families trust X-Lax than any other brand. When you need a laxative, you can count on X-Lax for relief in the morning. For occasional use, only as directed. Why X-Lax? My family trusts it. That's why. Now you can soften hard, calloused skin without painful cutting or scraping. Apply stainless Dermasoft cream to your feet as directed. Insist on Dermasoft cream. Mike Cubbage, the third baseman for the Minnesota Twins, goes back into the dugout to get sunglasses. The score here in New York is the Yankees for the Twins one. Chris Shambus will step in to face Gary Serum. And Frank, some of our guests on a, on a pregame show received gift certificates at Benihana. Watch in amazement as your chef turns prime steak, chicken, and shrimp into an oriental feast. Go ahead, Frank, watch. I'm watching. <laughs> Getting hungry. Pitch to Chambler. Taking outside. Ball one. Chambler single to drive and a run in the first inning. Ripped the ball just over the bag at first. 1-0 pitch from Serum. Curve is over for a call strike. And of course, other guests received. Son of a gun. Clear off little red 1250 watt hair dryer. Separate controls for heat and airflow. Chambler hits a fly ball. Shallow right. Coming on the right fielder. And puts it away. One down. Easy play for Hoskin Powell. Reggie Jackson will step in. Jackson struck out to end the first inning. Reggie is batting 272. Takes a breaking ball on the inside corner. Strike one. Reggie takes his eyeglasses off. Puts them back. Well, Jackson made a perfect throw in the top half of this inning to cut Roy Smalley down after his single to right field. He cut him down at second. The old one pitch is bounced to the first base side foul and grabbed by first base coach Gene Michael. No 
balls and two strikes on Reggie Jackson. The wind up by Gary Serum on the pitch. Cut out and foul behind the plate. Serum relieved in the second inning. Darrell Jackson started, went one in the third innings on about the four Yankee runs on six hits. He walked one, struck out two men. Serum has walked one, not a lot of base hits since coming on. And he pitches outside to Jackson, one and two. When Billy Martin regains the managership of the Yankees in 1980, current manager Bob Lemon will be appointed as general manager of the Yankees. Until 1980, Lemon will be the manager. Now the pitch to Jackson is lined to left field. That one's going to drop in for the base hit. Played on one hop by Rich Childs, and Jackson is on with a single. That is the Yankees' seventh hit, their first off Gary Serum. And Greg Nettles will step in. Nettles led off the second inning with a single to right and came in to score run number three. After singling, Nettles went from first to third on Mike Heath's bouncer to the third baseman on which Heath was thrown out. Nettles running with the pitch, didn't even slow down at second. He went on to third and then scored on a suicide squeeze. He lines a ball foul into the seats down on the right side. Strike one. pitch outside. Let's pause five seconds for station identification on the New York Yankee Radio Network. You're listening to 1460 WOKO Albany. <laughs> one ball, one strike on Greg. Ball two, low outside. Bright sunshine again. The few high clouds we talked about have passed on. Far into the distance. Two on to Greg. Low and inside, ball three. In the Yankee clubhouse, after the Billy Martin announcement, Greg Nettles went over to Martin and said, Hey, Skip, think you need a third baseman in 1980? <laughs> of course, the obvious rejoinder was, Yes, do you know where I can find one? <laughs> three one, pitch coming. Line on the right center field. That'll be a base hit. Fielded on one bounce by the center fielder, Willie Norwood, as Reggie Jackson coasts into third. Nettles has his second hit. All well, the Yankees continue to pound the pill. Runners at first and third. And the batter will be Mike Heath. Pound the pill. Term I picked up in pharmaceutical school. <laughs> well, Mike Heath will step in and he will try to pound the pill. Beautiful crowd. Beautiful day. It is just a lovely day. Temperature is not that bad. Humidity is down. A little cooling breeze blowing out toward right field. <laughs> Yankees are leading four to one. Runners at first and third. One out. And Serum pitches to Heath. High for a ball. Heath bounced to the third baseman, Cubbage, in the second inning. The youngster is hitting 286 right now. Nettles and Jackson lead from first and third. The pitch to Heath. Cut on, grounded sharply to third. And Jackson did not break. Throw to second for one, back to first for a double play. And Jackson did not break toward the plate. I don't know what Reggie was thinking about. It's a double play. No harm done, really. And the side is retired. The double play goes 5-4-3. Bill White will be along to carry you through the next three innings, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. At the end of three, the score, Yankees 4, Twins 1. Wherever you may roam, you'll find our name is known. You can trust the Delco. Thanks, Delco. Delco Freedom Battery. The Delco fleet of battery is truly maintenance-free. It never needs water, so the power is sealed in. Get freedom. You'll say, thanks, Delco. You're welcome. They've got the stuff. When the start is tough, you can trust the Delco. Thanks, Delco. Delco freedom battery. Delco, thanks, Delco. Oh,
trusted friend you've always known. It's Firestone. Mr. Bill White. All right, Fran Healy and Rich Childs. The left fielder leads off against Ken Clay, top of the fourth. Yankees leading four to one, and Clay's first pitch is in there called strike. For the Twins, here in the fourth inning, Childs, Glenn Adams, and then Willie Norwood. Clay rocks and deals the 0 1 pitch. Misses outside, it's one and one. Charles has been up once, fly to Pinella in left field. We've got a new left fielder for the Yankees, Gary Thomason. That's Pinella hurt his hand trying to steal home. Bounce to first base, foul just outside the bag. One and two. Lou Pinella getting quite frisky on the bases, Fran Healy. Yes, he did, of course. Like I told Frank, you can't be messing with those catches with all that gear. <laughs> One and two on Rich Childs. Yankees playing very aggressive baseball this afternoon. One, two pitch. Too high. Greg Nettle is going from first to third base on a bounce off the third. Big play for him because he scored on the sacrifice or squeeze butt by Fred Stanley. On the ground, one hopper to Randolph at second. He throws on the first base. They've got Childs. There's one away. Batter now is Glenn Adams, a designated hitter. Adams grounded out Randolph to Chambliss in the second inning, so he's 0 for 1. Twins got off to a 1 to nothing lead in the top of the first. Yankees came back with two in the bottom of the first, two more in the second. Clay's too low, ball one. Another big crowd here at the stadium. The Yankees will go. 1,200,000 some. Curveball is low, 2 and 0. About 1,250,000. After today's crowd is counted, averaging 28,500 per date. 2 0 pitch. Swung on and foul tip held by Heath, 2 and 1. On deck is Willie Norwood, last night's hero for the Minnesota Twins. It was his home run in the right center that beat. Sparky Lyle, too high, ball three. Hit it in the 10th inning. Mike Eve walks the ball halfway out to the mound, says something to Ken Clay and flips him to baseball. Now the youngster's back behind the plate. And the 3-1 pitch to Glenn Adams. Swung on line over Stanley's head, base hit over quickly as Thomason. Comes up with the ball, gets it into second base, and Glenn Adams holds it first. Twin sixth base hit against Ken Clay. Here's Willie Norwood, who singled the right field in the second inning and stole second, but was left stranded. Norwood, the right-handed batter. Chambliss holding on Adams at first. Pitch to Norwood. Too low, ball one. On deck is Rob Wilfong. Yankee infield back looking for two except for Chambliss. He has to keep Adams close there at first base. The 1-0 pitch. Fouled straight back and out of play. A ball and a strike. Clay now gets a new baseball. Gets a sign. He's at the belt. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Norwood. 
fouled back. One ball and two strikes. Double header tomorrow. One o'clock start first game. Yankees and the Minnesota Twins. Yankees have done well against the Twins this year. They've won five of the first seven plays. Had a great year last year against the Twins also. Eight and two. Yankees do well against the West. Have a little bit of trouble against the East. Now the set by Clay. Here's the one-two pitch to Norwood. Low and inside. Two balls, two strikes. Clay taking plenty of time. Now he's ready. And the 2-2 pitch. Hit in the air. Deep left center. Thomason on the run. Still going. Still going. And on the warning track. Makes the catch. Just in front of the 430-foot sign. All the way down to second base. Wrestling back to first. Is Glenn Adams. Thomason. Uh, Franini really went a long way to catch that ball. Yes, he did, Bill. That was a fastball. Out over the plate. Oh, it drove that ball a long way. Drove that ball about 428 feet from home plate. I'd be very depressed if I hit that ball. It was caught a great catch by Gary Thomason. I think Thomason's speed fools a lot of people. He takes those long strides and really eats up a lot of ground with each stride. Yes, he does. Here's Rob Wolfong, and he takes the strike. Adams on at first, two outs now in the fourth inning. Yankees ahead, four to one. Ophong got an infield hit in the second inning. Batting at 282. Takes low. Now Clay's ready. And the pitch. Called strike on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes on Rob Wilfong. The one-two delivery. Swung on, bounced towards second base. Randolph backs up, bobbles the ball, and everybody safe. Willie let the ball play him, backed off the ball just a bit towards second. Ball bounced up, hit him in the glove, hit his knee, and bounced over towards shortstop where Fred Stanley picked it up. Everybody save Adams down at second base. Wolfong on at first, and Randolph picks up an error. And with two outs, the batter will be. Let's see, well, we might get a pinch hitter for Portland. Butch Weiniger will come on. Weiniger, a switch hitting catcher, will bat for Portland. We mentioned, well, we were on television, and there's Portland. Doesn't get too much of an opportunity to bat. He was only batting at 187 when he fouled out the nettle. So they're going to send in Butch Weiniger. And Bill Borgman, not a bad hitter. Of course, you're not going to produce when you bat, for example, once every week, twice a week. Very difficult. Next thing you find yourself batting about 210. Well, you got to say nice things about him now because he was born in Patterson, New Jersey. He lives over in Butler. Right, and a, and a good catcher. What a good arm, but the thing is, you are not going to produce with the stick unless you go to the plate three, four times a game every day. When you have those reserve players that have that great year with the bat, a lot of luck involved. A lot of luck. You know, talking about that, it brings to mind Johnny Blanchard, who was a reserve receiver here with the New York Yankees, who was very productive. Okay. Coming in once in a while and also pinch hitting. Right, you have to, you, when they're productive, you have to keep those guys around. Very lucky. All right, Weininger in now batting for Borgman, and the pitch to Weininger is outside, ball one. Yankees lead, four to one, top of the fourth. Twins have runners at first and second, and two outs. The 1 0. Weininger takes a strike, one ball, one strike. Ken Clay making his 20th appearance, his fifth start. Here's the 1-1. Outside, two balls and a strike on Butch Weininger. Weininger, a youngster from York, Pennsylvania. Down around Harrisburg. Now the set. 2-1 pitch. Low and inside, ball three. 
On deck is Hoskin Powell. Now well, Pete Rose extended his hitting streak to 42 straight. I guess now they'll start talking about DiMaggio's 56 game streak. 3-1 pitch. Low ball four and the bases are loaded. Adams goes to third base. Wolfong down to second. Weiniger on at first. And with two outs, the batter is Hoskin Powell. Still a guy that surprised me. Never challenged that consecutive game batting streak right here. Playing first base for the Minnesota Twins, Rod Carew. Pitch to Powell. Swung on and lifted in the air. Foul territory left side over there, Stanley. And he makes the catch in foul territory, and the side is retired. No runs. One hit, one error, and the bases were left loaded by the Minnesota Twins. At the end of three and a half, the Yankees four, the Twins one. Has a separate grill, a separate cook, even a separate cash register. So if you're dying for Wendy's hot and juicy hamburgers but don't have the time, just drive up to Wendy's pickup window and away you go. Wendy's 1335 Central Avenue, just east of Colony Center, 741 New Loudon Road, just south of the Circle, 3 Clifton Country Road, opposite the entrance to Clifton Country Ball, and coming soon to Glenville. Musty hot weather odors, Lysol disinfectant spray cleans them out of the air, leaves a clean, fresh scent. Lysol sprays away odors in mattresses, sheets, pillowcases, tennis, and golf shoes. Lysol gets rid of bathroom odors, too. Kills household germs on surfaces, including germs that cause odors. Yeah, what you need is Lysol spray in the good old summertime. Okay, at the bottom of the fourth. Score the Yankees four, the Twins one. Fred Stanley steps in, says Gary Sam. He'll be followed by the top of the order, Mickey Rivers, and then Willie Randolph. Now catching for the Minnesota Twins, Butch Weiniger. Bill? All right, friend. Fred Stanley squeezed a run home in the second inning, so he's one for one. Got a base hit when he beat the throw the first base. It was bobbled by Daryl Jackson anyway. It's one strike on Stanley. Serum's next pitch. Curveball. Line left center field. Base hit. Over quickly. Norwood backhands the ball. Chicken takes a big turn, but Stanley will go back to first base. So he's two for two. Here's Mickey Rivers. He was struck out and doubled in a run. Mickey's one for two in the ball game. Yankees now four runs on nine base hits. The Minnesota Twins one run on six. Weiniger now out talking to Serum. Well, Gene Muck has the luxury of a three-year contract just agreed to yesterday between Muck and the Minnesota Twins. Don Zimmer has a year. That's next year with an option. Evidently, it's an automatic option each year. So he'll be sure to be paid at least one year after they let him go. Bounce up the middle. And throw in the center field. Around second, going to third, Fred Stanley. And he'll make it there standing up. One thing about managing it seems, Fran Healy, inevitably you're going to get fired. Or you're going to have to resign. Uh, that's the truth. Of course, that the same managers are hired to be fired. But it's always difficult, I'm sure, to turn down a position like that. No, it isn't. <laughs> Here's Willie Randolph. He's walked to score and fly to center field. Willie is 0 for 1. Yankee runners at first and third. Nobody out. Yankees leading 4 to 1, bottom of the fourth. Twin infield back. Randolph takes a wide breaking curve ball outside, ball one. And the Twins bullpen. Left hander Jeff Holly. Left hander. Now Serum sets. And the 1 0. Curve ball chopped wide a third through base hit left field. Stanley scores and Rivers will hold at second base. The Yankees now lead five to one. Willie Randolph driving in his 24th run of the year. The Yankee runners now first and second. Still nobody out. And the batter is Thurman Munson, the designated hitter. He's walked 
walked, and he's also a single to left field and scored. Munson batting at 297. On deck is Gary Thomas. Thurm taking plenty of time getting set in the batter's box. Holly continuing to throw in the Minnesota Twin bullpen. Now Serum's ready. Pitch to Munson. Swung on and fouled back. Bill Mickey Rivers broke towards third and stopped, and of course it, was, it hurt Willie Randolph because Randolph has to watch Rivers. Both Rivers and Randolph run on their own. If Rivers breaks for third, Randolph has to break for second. So it was a good decoy Mickey threw at uh, Willie. I think it dig Munson, too. I don't think Munson would have swung on that ball. After he swung at it, he looked down at Rivers. Now the set. The one strike pitch to Munson. Curve balls. He called strike two. No balls and two strikes. Sam looks like he's got a pretty good wide breaking curve ball. He came on in relief of Daryl Jackson in the second inning. Jackson went one and two-thirds innings, gave up four runs on six hits. The young left-hander walked one and struck out two before leaving. Here's a two-strike pitch. Sidearm fastball line. Fair ball down the right field line, and a fan grabs it. It'll be a ground rule double. They'll stop Randolph at third base, and Mutz will go on to second, and they will allow Rivers to score. The Yankees now lead six to one. Munson picking up his second base out of the ball game. And his first run batted in. He now has 48. Well, the Yankees continue to chip away. And Gene Mock now walking slowly out to the mound. And looking out at his bullpen. And I think, Fran Ely, we might get another pitching change with the left-handed batter Gary Thomas and Duan. With the Yankee runners at second and third. And then they have Shambliss and Jackson. So I've got to agree with you. And they do. They go to Holly, the left-hander, out of the Twins' bullpen. And there's a break in the action with the score in New York 6, Minnesota 1. This is Mel Allen. If you think a Reggie Jackson home run travels far, Emory travels over 250,000 miles a day because they're on every key flight of every airline that carries freight with a fleet of charter planes waiting in the wings. And that's what makes Emory the air force in air freight. Wait a minute. Okay, on the Major League scoreboard, in Boston after seven innings, it's Boston 1, Kansas City nothing. Final score, Toronto 4, Milwaukee 3. May hit his second home run in the eighth with nobody aboard. For Milwaukee and Big John Mayberry hit his 16th home run in the second inning for Toronto. Detroit 8, Seattle 1 after seven and a half. And it's the White Sox six, the Rangers nothing after five and a half in Chicago, Oakland and Cleveland, California at Baltimore. Both night games. Out in San Francisco, the Giants and the Cubs no score after one. The Big Red Machine, six. The Phillies nothing after seven. George Foster at his 24th home run. And Moscow is first and the second with two aboard. Pete Rose. The base hit in the first inning to extend his batting streak to 42 games. The night game in Montreal. Correction in Atlanta, the Expos and the Braves. The night game, Pittsburgh, Los Angeles, St. Louis, San Diego, night game. Here in Yankee Stadium, large crowd on hand for Old Timers Day. Yankees have six runs on 12 hits, one error. The Twins, one run on six hits and no errors. The Twins now bring in Holly, a left-hander, the third pitcher of the game for the Minnesota Twins to face Gary Thomason, the Yankees, with Munson on second and Willie Randolph at third. Bill? Well, Holly's making his sixth relief appearance for the Minnesota Twins. He's only pitched eight innings, given up two base hits. Has no record. Jeff Holly, a tall left-hander. Yankee runners at second and third. Randolph to third. Munson's at second. And the Twins bring their infield in. Nobody out as Holly sets and deals to Thomason. Hit foul. Upper deck left side. Not a play. No balls and a strike on Thomason. 
Gary got it in the ball game, batting for Lou Pinella in the second inning after Pinella tried to steal home, and Jackson throw to Borgman, got him. He hit Borgman, Glenn Borgman, who was then catching very hard, and Pinella evidently injured his hand, so he's out of the ball game. Holly almost balked. Started up, then wisely backed off. Now he gets the sign and backs off again. He wants to talk to Weininger. Randolph over at third base. Munson down at second. Nobody out. The Yankees already leading 6-1. to one. We're still in the bottom half of the fourth inning. And a great all-star, a great old-timers day game. Mel Allen was here. Bobby Avila. Bobby Avila now the mayor of Veracruz, Mexico. Roberto Avila, great second baseman with the Cleveland Indians. One strike pitch, called strike on Thomas. 0 and 2. Did you ever think of running for office? Nope. <laughs> what? The mayor of Philadelphia. I don't even live in Philly. Of course, thought... that wouldn't disqualify. <laughs> <laughs> now the set. Here's a two strike pitch. Call strike three, right on the outside corner. Tom Thomas and Cod looking, and there's one away. Thomas is still down there, talking to home plate umpire Steve Palermo. Now Gary walks away, and here's Chambliss. Chris has singled in a run, and he's fly to right field. He's one for two. Enfield still in for the Twins. As Holly sets. Deals to Chambliss. Down low, ball one. Old timers day today. Bobby Brown and Jerry Coleman, because of military service, that prevented both of these guys from being in all five World Series. The 1 0 pitch. Change up is low. Two balls, no strikes. You know, you talk about Bobby Brown. There's one guy really, really respected. Going to school, going to medical school finishing. Big league ball player for a few years. Now a noted heart surgeon. That's great. Yes, it is. 2-0 pitch. Chambliss on a blind and caught by Smalley. Everybody gets back safely. Smalley dug that out down around his shoe top. Robbing Chambliss of two runs batted in. Oh, there are two outs now. Randolph still at third base. Mudson still at second. And here's Reggie Jackson. Jackson struck out any single. Also made a great play, throwing down and throwing out Roy Smalley, trying to stretch a single into a double back in the third inning. Smalley let off with a drive into the right field corner and tried to go to second base, but Jackson threw a perfect strike to Fred Stanley to cut him down. Reggie now batting at 275. Trying to bring the left fielder in. Jackson takes the strike on the inside corner. Roy Smalley, the shortstop, really waving now at Rich Childs. He gets Childs in four or five steps. Jackson has pretty good power to left here. Now the set. Here's the one strike pitch. Swung on and missed the change up. No balls and two strikes on Jackson. Reggie so far this year. 15 home runs. 55 runs batted in. And normally he gets hot in the second half of a season. Now the set. The two strike pitch. He checked his swing. No, he went too far. And Jackson goes down swinging. Yankees pick up two more runs. And at the end of four, the Yankees lead the Twins by a score of six to one. Listen to that crowd, Phil, shouting for their hero, Reggie Jackson, the first man ever to hit five home runs in one series. He set nine records last year, and why are you shaking your head? Well, they're not shouting for Reggie Jackson. They're shouting for Reggie, the new candy hit. Now, don't be absurd. Well, that crowd is hungry, Frank, for chewy caramel, crunchy peanuts, chocolatey coating. Quick, give me a bite of your Reggie. No. But all that shouting made me hungry, too. No. I'll scream, Reggie, Reggie. I'll outshout the crowd. This is so embarrassing.
let's take five seconds for station identification on a New York Yankee radio network. You're listening to 1460 WOKO, Albany. Roy Smalley swings on a first pitch. It's it in the air to the left center field, and Gary Thomason made the play. So there's one away. Smalley, first ball hitting. Leading off for the Twins in the fifth inning. And skying to Gary Thomason. Here's Rod Carew, who slides to center field and bounced back to the mound. Carew is 0 for 2. Rodney was 0 for 5 last night. Twins won it, though, 7 5 on a home run by Willie Norwood in the 10th inning off Sparky Lyle. Carew takes low ball one. Plays 1 0 pitch to Carew. Low again. Two balls, no strikes. Rod now batting at 334. Not too often you see Carew go 0 for 5. Here's a 2 0 Rod. Swung on, base hit up the middle. Rivers over quickly, and Carew picks up his first base hit. He's now 1 for 3. That'll bring on Mike Cubbage, the third baseman. He drove in the twin run in the first inning with a bounce out. He's also grounded out, ran off the Chambliss. Cubbage 0 for 2 with a run batted in. Rod Carew at first base, one away. We're in the fifth inning here at Yankee Stadium. Cubbage batting 3-12. Play taking a lot of time. Now he's ready. Pitch to Cubbage. Misses outside. Ball one. Now Clay is ready. And the 1 0. Outside again. Two balls. No strikes. Now Mike Heath calls time, walks the ball halfway out to the mound, says something to Ken Clay, and flips him the baseball. 2-0. and oh. Rich Childs on deck. Now Clay is ready. And the pitch. Low it in the dirt. Three balls, no strikes. The base hit by Carew, the seventh base hit by the Twins off Ken Clay. Now the set and the 3 0, and they're called strike three and one. Clay beat the Blue Jays and is only one of the uh, year. Back on April 21st. Here's a 3 1. Ball four too high. Still on that pitch right there, Clay had the body way out in front of his arm. Did not allow the arm to catch up. When this happens, you will be usually wild high out of the strike zone. What, what he has to do is really shorten his stride, get himself a chance to come right over the top, slow his body down so the arm will catch up to get that downward projection on the ball and he's able to get that ball into the strike zone. Of course, Bob Lemon, great pitcher, and a, a sinker slider pitcher, like Clay, out there talking with Kenny Clay. And the New York Yankee bullpen, number 40, Ron Davis, recently recalled from West Haven. The Yankees purchased Davis's contract from their double-A affiliate. Twins with men on first and second. Cubbage and Carew. One out. Bill? And here's Rich Childs, the right fielder. He slides the left, bounce to second. Pitch to Childs. Hit on the ground to Stanley. Might be two. There's Randolph for one. Back to first. Double play. Taylor made six, four to three. Double play. No runs. A base hit and a man left on base. Bottom of the fifth coming up. The Yankees six. The Twins one. 
Listening to the Yankees here on OK Country or on your way to the Bronx to see the Bombers at the stadium, you know you're going to build up a big appetite. Nothing goes better with baseball than a big dom sub. Just as you never get tired of rooting for the Yanks, you'll never get tired of big dom subs. That's because there's so many delicious varieties to choose from, 37 in all. And whether you choose a mixed cold cut, a turkey, a shrimp torpedo, you know you're getting the best. Bakery fresh rolls, baked especially for big dom, are stacked high with garden fresh lettuce, tomatoes, and the filling your choice. Big Dom makes those great hot subs, too. Meatball, sausage, veal and peppers, topped with specially seasoned homemade sauces that make my mouth water just thinking about them. And be sure to try our brand new Little Joe Hot Deli Delights. Nine new sandwiches served hot on a sesame seed roll. Try Little Joe's Hot Barbecue Beef with that tangy secret sauce. There's no way you can beat the great taste of a Big Dom sub or a Little Joe's Hot Deli Delight. But get the real McCoy at one of our eight great Big Dom sub shops. If we had more locations, just like the New York Yankees, We'd be world champions, too. I can't believe they can do it for $19.99. Installed? The Illumini Sears Muzzler is only $19.99 installed. And listen to the Muzzler promise. Sears promises that the Muzzler will last as long as you own your American-made car. Or return it for refund or replacement free. And if Sears installed it, they'll install the new one free. Well, you can't beat that. I think it's fantastic. It's a great promise. The Muzzler, only $19.99 installed. Sizes to fit most American-made cars. Price may vary in Alaska and Hawaii at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Jeff Raleigh pitching to Greg Nettles, and Nettles slices the first pitch off in the upper deck off the left side, strike one. Still in Boston, it's the Red Sox one, Kansas City nothing after seven innings. Dennis Leonard and Jim Wright hooked up in a pitcher's duel in cozy Fenway Park. The Red Sox have lost nine of their last ten. Saw some of that lead evaporate. Milwaukee getting in contention along with the Yankees and the Baltimore Orioles. Even the Tigers moving up. One strike pitch to Nettles. Misses outside. It's one and one. Yankees ahead six to one. Yankees batting in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Check that. Bottom half of the fifth inning. One one to Nettles. Curveball swung on and missed. One and two. It was interesting right there, even though Holly got the strike on Nettles to a hanging breaking ball, and he was a little bit disappointed in himself. Here's the one, two to Nettles. Fastball, grounded to second base. Wolfong has it, takes his time, draws on the crew. They've got Nettles, and there's one away. That'll bring on the catcher, Mike Heath. Mike is grounded out twice, once into a double play. Well, he's over two. And in the air, deep left, going back is Childs near the warning track, makes the play. Two outs. That'll bring on Fred Stanley, who's two for two in this ball game. Squeezed in a run and got a base hit on it. Second inning. Single to left center in the fourth. He scored both times. A lot of guys here for the old-timers day. Mel Allen, Bobby Avila, Yogi Berra, Ralph Branca, Bobby Brown. Roy Campanella was here. Joe Collins and Joe DiMaggio, Carl Erskine, Bob Feller, Whitey Ford, Junior Gilliam. Bill Greve, the umpire, Granny Hamner, Tommy Henry. Two balls, no strikes. Jim Honacek, Ellie Howard, Monty Irwin, Charlie King Kong Keller, Harmon Killebrew is next door doing the twin broadcast. Ball three outside on Stanley, Clyde King, Clem Lapine, Bob Lemon, of course, presently the Yankee skipper, and future he'll be the Yankee general manager. Eddie Lopez. Ball four, Sal Magley, Al Lopez, Mickey Mantle, Cliff Mapes, Roger Maris, Gus Muck, longtime Yankee trainer, along with Johnny Mize. One of the best records for a player not to be in the Hall of Fame. Herb Noren, Tony Oliva, stroke the double in the ball game. Joe Ostrowski and Andy Pasco and Camilo, Camilo Pasquale. Joe Pepitone got a base hit. Here's Rivers. 
He takes Bob down low. The ball gets past. Weiniger goes back to the screen, and Stanley will go into second base. A wild pitch for Jeff Holly. Other guys here today, Sally Vars. Sally used to catch for the Yankees. Gene Woodling, Wes Westrom. The Colonel, Jim Turner, was here, along with Bobby Thompson. John Stevens, an umpire. Moose. Charlie Silver, P.G., of course, still the Yankee clubhouse chief. Andy Semenik, Al Rosen, Saul Rogovin, Scooter, Bill Rigney. Foul straight back, two strikes on Rivers. Vic Rashi and Bob Porterfield. I think they all had a lot of fun. What was the score of that game? 3-2 or 3-3. Three, three. Of course, the score is meaningless. Get those guys here. Get them all in uniform. Fill the stands up. 1-1 one, one pitch. Low. A short pass ball. Stanley does not advance. Two balls and a strike on Rivers. Score is meaningless, of course. If the Yankees fall behind, Scooter will, will keep score and put them right ahead. The old-timers. Yeah, Scooter struck out three times. <laughs> at one time at the plate. At one time at the plate. <laughs> Of course, when you miss the third strike, they call it an automatic foul tip. <laughs> then he walked, which I couldn't understand. If he can't strike out, shouldn't be able to walk. 2-1 uh, to Rivers. Swung on and fouled back. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, stole the base. Tell you, the big upset, though, is that Scooter showed up for the broadcast <laughs> after the All-Star game. That's a new record. First time eight years I've been here. <laughs> Here's a 2-2 now to Mickey Rivers. Nub foul and back out of play. It'll make the Minnesota twin dugout. Well, the count remains. Two balls and two strikes on Rivers. Yankees leading 6-1, to one, playing the bottom half of the fifth inning. Fred Stanley's on at second base or two outs. It's always a big throw. You see those old timers. Of course, I just read about them. you played against a lot of them. Some of them. A lot of them? Well, some of them. <laughs> Ellie Howard. Yogi Berra, Whitey Ford. Here's the 2-2. Popped up out behind second base. Roy Smalley, the shortstop with the glasses down. He's under the ball and makes the catch and the side is retired. Yankees in the fifth inning, no runs. And leave a man on base. And at the end of five, Yankees six, twins one. The day is done. It's time to let it go. It's the moment to unwind. So just say bud. When you've been moving fast all day, you know there's nothing like slowing down the pace and relaxing with a Budweiser. But when you say Budweiser, you said it all. And I the voice thank the word. They came from across the sea, from Japan, Germany, England. Italy, bright and eager to show what they could do. They were foreigners in a foreign land. But one thing that was true in the old country was also true in the new. You can't buy a better club for any kind of car than Champion. You can't buy a better club no matter where you are than Champion. Champion number one in the world. Imports from every country find America is the land of opportunity. The opportunity to use Champion, the world's best-selling spark plug. The plug that wins more big races. For imports, you can't buy a better plug than Champion. You can't buy a better plug than Champion. You can't buy a better plug than Champion. is batting against Clay in the top of the sixth. Fouls went off, and the count on him is a ball and a strike. 
Yankees scored two runs in the bottom of the first, two more in the bottom of the sixth. Check that. Two more in the bottom of the second, two more in the bottom of the fourth. They lead 6-1. to one. Twins got their run top of the first. 1-1 one, one pitch. Too high. Good fastball, but location was bad. 2-1. and one. Two balls, one strike on Glenn Adams. He's bounced to second and single. Adams, Norwood, and then Wolfong against Clay in the sixth inning. Pitch is bounced. Fair ball, first base. Campbell has it. Throws to Clay, covering. Pretty play. Put out three to one. Tam was getting that ball on the line, ending up in foul territory, spinning around and throwing a strike to Ken Clay. One out. Here's Willie Norwood, the center fielder. Evidently, last night, center fielder Dan Ford, who is the top RBI man on the Minnesota Twins, pulled the groin muscle. He's out. Norwood's in. Pitch to Norwood. Bunted at and missed. Strike one. Norwood thought he got the bat back. He's saying something to home plate umpire Steve Palermo. Now Norwood gets back in. Plays one strike pitch. High. A ball on the strike. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch. Low, 2-1. and one. Attendance, 46,711. Here's a 2-1 to Willie Norwood. Swung on and fouled back. It's 2-2. Two and two. Well, the biggest problem Kenny Clay has had since he's been called up to the major leagues is control trouble. Of course, today he's walked one batter. Obviously, has found the strike zone, and he will be successful if he can get that fastball in the strike zone the way it sinks. Here's a 2-2. Swung on, chopped the third foul. Carl Kuhl, the first third base coach, will pick it up. Gives it to Nettles, who gives it back to Clay. Yankees now have their bullpen busy. What's that Davis out there throwing again? Ron Davis. Bob Kmeyer has been sent back to the minor leagues. Here's the 2-2 to Norwood. Line right to Randolph, and he makes the play. Needs up. Two up. Rob Wolfong has gotten an infield hit, and he's gotten on on an error by Willie Randolph. Well, he's one for two. Yankees lead six to one, six inning. Two outs, nobody on for the Twins. Low ball one. Clay rocks, kicks, and deals the 1-0 pitch. Bounce to second. Willie Randolph is there. Throws on the Chambliss, and the side is retired. Three up and a three down for the first time in the ball game. And at the end of five and a half, Yankees six, wins one. Cahoe's Tobacco Company has more to offer than the name implies. They carry a full line of all Panasonic products, including Panasonic clock radios, table radios, portable and pocket-sized transistors, cassette and 8-track tape players and recorders, Panasonic CBs, 5 to 19 diagonal inch color TVs. Outstanding values and exceptional prices on Panasonic products can be found now. A Panasonic 12-inch diagonal color portable, only $269. 9-inch diagonal battery operation 
operated black and white TV, just $149. Panasonic Digital Clock Radio, $39.95. A Panasonic AM FM Stereo 8 Track and Record Player for just $169. Cohoes Tobacco carries a full line of Panasonic stereo components, including turntables, speakers, headphones, amps, and component tape decks. Stop in and check out the complete Panasonic line at Cohoes Tobacco Company, 60 Remsen Street, Cohoes. Open Monday noon till 5, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, 9 to 5.30, and Friday night still 9. I found a solution for today's high food prices. Uh, right here in my cookbook, eggs. <laughs> That's right, eggs. They're packed with protein, and for cost per serving, well, almost nothing beats eggs. Best of all, the cookbook's full of great recipes and serving suggestions for breakfast, lunch, dinner, Eggs snacks, are one of today's best food buys. For instance, when eggs cost 75 cents a dozen, they're only 50 cents a pound. The Incredible Edible Egg. The American Egg Board. Willie Randolph leading off for the Yankees in the bottom half of the sixth inning. They lead Minnesota 6-1. to He takes the strike from Jeff Holly. High, it's 1-1. One and one. Well, he has walked and scored, fly to center field, and driven in a run with a single to left field. Holly's 1-1 one, one pitch to Randolph. Swung on and missed. One ball and two strikes. It'll be Randolph, then Munson, then Gary Thomason. The 1-2 to Randolph. High and away, two balls, two strikes. Holly winds and the pitch. Low and away. Good change up, but low and away. Three balls, two strikes. Bill, Holly has to be very deceptive to the Yankee batters. He's 6'5", 210 pounds. It is not overpowering. Here's the fastball as misses outside. Ball four. Of course, when you see a guy out there, he's six foot five. you're expecting that overpowering fastball. It's always in the back of your mind. He's not overpowering. He relies on a changeup and a slow curveball, which will make his fastball look faster than it really is. So Randolph at first base. Nobody out. Mutson's a batter. He's two for two. Single and scored, walked, and doubled in a run. Mutson now with 48 runs batted in. Batting 299. Base hit here would put Mutson over 300. And the pitch to Thurman. Strike on the outside corner. Final score from Boston. The Red Sox won Kansas City nothing. Dennis Leonard gave up only four hits to the Red Sox. But absorbed a lot. Jim Wright, the winner. The 1-0 to Mutson. Change up as low as 1-1. One one. You don't often see a one to nothing ball game at Fenway. I was going to say that the wind had to be blowing directly to home plate. Hmm. Holly gets a sign. Now he sets. Checks Randolph at first base. 2 0. Slice foul straight back. 2 and 1 on Munson. Check that. The ball and two strikes. Looking at home plate umpire Steve Palermo. One and two. Holly gets a new ball. Randolph with a short lead at first. He's being held there by Carew. The pitch to Munson. Fouled off. Right side, upper deck. Bounces back downstairs. Still the ball and two strikes. Yankees lead 6-1 to one in the sixth inning. They score their runs in braces. Two in the first, two in the second, two in the fourth. Throw the first base and Randolph is back. Now Holly's ready. Here's the one-two. Swung on and missed. Munson goes down swinging. That was a little quick pitch by Holly. 
think he thought Randolph might be going. He didn't spend much time in his uh, set position. Of course, he has to come to a stop. It's not the block, and of course, a lot of times, umpires ignore it. The block when you get caught. Right. Here's Thomason, 0 for 2. Bounce to second and struck out. Lou Bonella started and left, hurt his hand in the collision home plate. Had to leave the ball game. Pitch to Thomason. Curve ball, sidearm, misses outside, ball one. The Yankees have six runs on 12 base hits. The Twins one run on seven against Ken Clay. And we're in the sixth inning. Brand mentioned to you the Boston Red Sox have already won. They beat the Royals one to nothing. Ball strike on Thomas. It's one and one. Well, the Sox have now lost nine of their last 11. Or from a positive standpoint, have a one-game hitting streak, a one-game winning streak going. <laughs> Fouled back upon the screen. One and two. Randolph walks off first. He does not take a big lead there. Holly checks him. The one, two, two Thomason. Two highs, two and two. Attendance was announced at 46,711. And despite the fact the Yankees have a five run lead, not too many of these people are moving. Here's the two, two. Runner going. Too high. Ball throw down to second. Will not be in time. Willie Randolph has stolen his 18th base. Now let's take five seconds for station identification on the New York Yankee Radio Network. You're listening to 1460 WOKO, Albany. Randolph got a good jump. Steal that base. Weininger got rid of the ball quickly. Had to rush the ball. The ball tailed towards the runner. But Randolph beat the throw. Now here's a payoff pitch to Gary Thomas. Swung on and fouled back. Of course, against left-handed pitchers, if you're going to steal a base, you usually guess. You guess that he's throwing the ball to the catcher. And that's when you will get the big jump. Of course, if you guess wrong, he goes to first base. And many times you're caught sliding into second by a throw from the first baseman. 3-2. Swung on and popped up behind the plate. Weininger coming back. And he runs out of the room. The ball's on top of the screen. Count remains three and two. I just mentioned the first baseman throwing the ball at second base, and that's a difficult throw. The runner, at times, blocking the view of the first baseman as he runs to second base. The first baseman throws the ball and says a little prayer. Uh, if normally the shortstop will give you a target, inside or outside. Sometimes you can wait for that runner to clear just a bit, and if the shortstop does his job, uh, he'll be there, and you can throw either to the shortstop side or the second base side or the right field side. Here's a 3-2. Swung on in the air to center field. Willie Norwood going back with the glasses down, makes the catch, and Randolph will hold at second. Two outs. So an interesting example uh, of a runner breaking from first base and heading towards second is when Freddie Potchek, when I was at the Kansas City Royals, would come over to cover, the runner would, would go directly at Potchek. And I believe even if he gave that target, the runner would try to get in front of Potchek because he was so small. And the first baseman, John Mayberry, could not see Potchek. And Mayberry picked up a number of errors. Well, I tell you, that first base, the second base bag might be taller than Potchek. <laughs> Here's Chambliss. Runner at second, two outs. Loop foul, that'll be out of play over third base. One strike on Chambliss. For a little guy, Potek, really a very aggressive player. Does an excellent job playing shortstop defensively. Does a lot of little things, steals bases. Of course, that's a big thing, but he moves runners, handles the bat fairly well. And very strong, very strong, for, especially for his size. And an all-star. Here's a one-strike pitch to Chambliss. Low and in the dirt. Blocked by Weininger. One and one. 
he said it gave him a great deal of satisfaction to make the major league because most people said you're too small. Yep, that's what I said. <laughs> Told him he was the wrong part. He should be at Hollywood. <laughs> or Belmont. So you can ride. Or Aqueduct. 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside. All he had to do was lose about 30 pounds. Now that's Maybe 40. He had to get down, what are you, about 109, 119 pounds, I think, jockeys have to weigh. Oh, I don't know. That's the park I'm talking about. Oh. Here's the 2-1 now. Chris Chambliss. Low. Ball three. Three balls and a strike. Well, Freddie's going to have to really drop some weight. <laughs> Randolph off second base, two out. The Yankees lead 6-1 to one in the bottom of the sixth inning. Chambliss has singled in a run. He's fly to right field, and he's lined to shortstop. Holly sets and deals a 3-1 pitch. Bounce foul into the Yankee dugout. Jay Johnstone tried to get it. Somebody beat him to it. Now he'll pick it up off the floor of the dugout. Count is full on Chris Chambliss. Three balls, two strikes. On deck is Reggie Jackson. Holly taking plenty of time. Still looking for sign. Now he's set. And the 3-2 pitch. High and tight, ball four. Chambliss walks. That'll bring on Reggie Jackson, who has struck out twice and single. He's one for three. You're not batting at 274. Randolph off second. Chambliss off first with two outs. Pitch to Jackson. Too high. Ball one. ready. And the 1-0 pitch. Inside. Two balls, no strikes. On deck is Greg Nettles. Ball's game slowing down just a bit here in the sixth inning. Yankees have runners at first and second. They're two outs. And the Yankees lead the Twins 6-1. to one. Holly now sets. 2-0 pitch to Jackson. Swung on. Base hit. Center field. Randolph will score. Campbells will go to third, and the Yankees now lead 7-1. to one. Well, the best way to turn booze to cheers is simply to get a base hit or make a great play, and Jackson has done both. He has two base hits, and he threw out a runner. This is true, Bill. That ball here, Holly, got a little bit out over the plate, and Jackson jumped in that pitch. I think at times Jackson falls into a slump. He becomes overly concerned with that fastball, and... But as you know, all the good hitters have trouble with the fastball, and you just have to take that pitch, and if they make the mistake, you jump on it. So Jackson has just driven in his 56th run of the year, and here's Greg Nettles, who's two for three. Pitch to Nettles, pop foul out of play in the upper deck. The Yankees now lead 7-1, to one, the base hit by Jackson, the Yankees' 13th base hit of the ball game. So Yankee runners first and third with two down. One strike on Nettles. On deck is Mike Heath. Holly now is at the belt. Here's the one strike pitch. Swung on and missed. Good low fastball. No balls. Two strikes on Nettles. Now Holly's ready. And the two strike pitch. Fastball is pulled to first base. Carew has it. Goes back to first base ahead of Nettles, and the side is retired. Yankees pick up another run here in the sixth inning. At the end of six, the Yankees seven, the Twins one. This portion of New York's finest baseball is brought to you by Specs, New York's finest athletic shoes. You know, when it comes to athletic shoes, Specs are a sure thing to take the Triple Crown again this year. Best performance, styling, and durability. Whether you're into basketball, tennis, running, or just hanging around looking good, you should be into Specs. Catch up with the Specs athletic shoes 
at over 600 fine stores in and around New York City. When you step into your specs, you're ready to step out. The day is done. Home. It's time to let it go. It's the moment to unwind. So just a bud. And for the king of beer. And settle back and be yourself. No matter what you do. No matter when or where. You know a glass of bud. Like an easy chair When you first Hey, let me tell you something Settling back with a long day behind you And a cold butt in front of you My man, that's living When you first Wild And I have a voice thing to it all right, back in Yankee Stadium, the Yankees 7, the Twins 1. The Yankees with 13 hits this afternoon. A beautiful crowd on a beautiful day. Great day for baseball. Old Timers Day. And one of the young old timers who struck out. No, oh, no, he, he, no, okay. He did not strike out. He, he, okay, Bill White's got it. He struck out. We got to tell I the truth, this, Scooter. Oh, no, I fouled every pitch off. You Huckleberries can't see a foul up here. Wes Weston was dropping those pitches at purpose. No, he, I'm <laughs> telling you, now, when did it, and there's a lot of camaraderie down there. What? Wait a minute, that's a kamikaze <laughs> down there. No, what I meant was <laughs> camaraderie. How about yeah, that? Okay. okay, I get a nod, okay. Then you walk. Yeah, but wait, let me tell you something. When I played against those Huckleberries, they never smiled at me or shook my hand when I got on base. Everything, Granny Hamner, uh, Junior Gilliam, we played to win hard, hard baseball. I thought you did very well today, except you could not put the ball in play, but you won. Wait walked. a minute, how about that play where I bluffed the bunt and swung away? Excellent play. All Excellent. right. Then. And you stole the base. Right. Uh, I tagged up, went to third on a fly. Okay, now you're up here with the New York Yankee hat on, and we're concerned about whether or not you showered. Or you did no. not, you Are did not you <laughs> kidding? I showered underarm deodorant after shave lotion? <laughs> hey, Healy, what, well, that makes people think that I'm smelling. <laughs> I smell or something. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm going to do one inning and get out of here. Winnegar takes a pitch from the newest Yankee, Ron Davis, called up from West Haven. Relieving Kenny Clay and Bob Lemon getting a chance to look at this youngster. Under game conditions, he has a 2 nothing count on Butch Weiniger. The Yankees lead 7-1. Davis, big wind-up, fast ball down low. It's 3 nothing. Phil Davis was the player picked up in the Ken Holtzman deal from the Chicago Cubs earlier in the season. All right, here's the 3-0 delivery, and a tie ball four. So Weiniger walks on four pitches. And Bob Lemon is coming out to talk to the young man. Now, Bob did a good job when he went out to talk with Kenny Clay before, friends. Of course, he's excellent with the young pitchers, and I'm sure with the veteran pitchers. Uh, Bob Lemon, a Hall of Famer himself, has pitched and also played the infield. And a great pitcher, great sinker ball, a great slider. Right now, I'm sure he wants to calm the young man down. It's his first day on the Major League Hill. You're right. He's trying to overthrow right now to impress. Right, and I'm sure he's a little bit nervous, and Bob jumped right out of the dugout after he walked the leadoff hitter here in the top of the seventh, Butch Weiniger. Right now, Powell steps in. Hoskin Powell. Hoskins right. corner. All right. Powell has singled and scored the Twins' only run in the first inning. Fly to left, pop to short. A left-hand batter. Kenny Clay worked a good six innings, allowing just one run on seven hits. And that pitch low and inside. That's five straight balls now that Davis has thrown. We've got action in the Yankee bullpen. Get old Eagle Eye to tell us who it is. We've got the goose. And here he knows. And there's ball two. That's six straight balls now. And the kid has really got to be frustrated out there. Look at him talking to himself. Number 40. 
If he got number 40, yeah, change that number. number. <laughs> that is a jinx. <laughs> and there's the strike. All right. Two balls and a strike. That could settle him down. He comes to the belt. And the pitch bouncing ball in the hole. It's a base hit to right field. Weinegel will stop at second as Jackson comes up with it, fires it in. So a little trouble here in the top of the seventh inning. First hit off Davis, the eighth for the Twins. And the batter now, Roy Smalley. Single twice, fly to left field. Stanley comes in to settle the young man down. Smalley having a good year with the bat. Has had problems at shortstop, and the Minnesota Twins fans in Bloomington have responded negatively to Smalley defensively. No kidding. Right. All right. Switch hitter batting left, and the pitch is outside ball one. He said the thing that helped him with the bat is he lift. I guess he got involved in a weight program last winter. All right. Time is called just momentarily. Now we're ready to go. And the pitch is down low, ball two, two and nothing. Remember, the Red Sox have won their ball game one and nothing, and that's unbelievable. Two shutouts in two days up at Fenway Park. Must have been some great pitching up there. There's the strike, two and one. Rich Gale last night for the Kansas City Royals. Today, Dennis Leonard, a four hitter, but absorbed the loss, one nothing. As a foul back and out of play in the upper deck. Who did the pitching for the Red Sox? Jim Wright. How do you like that? He's a good-looking pitcher. He is. he is. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. Top of the seventh. Yanks lead 7-1. They've got to win to stay eight games behind the Red Sox. Foul again upstairs and out of play. Absolutely beautiful day. Weatherman couldn't have been more kind to the old timers. And a good crowd. 46,711 pay. Not counting the freebies here today. The 2 2 pitch. Check swing. And Lemon jumps out of the dugout, says that's the third base umpire. They do. And Larry McCoy said, no, he did not go around. So Lennon sits down. Full count now on Roy Smalley. Stretched by Davis. And the pitch. Ball four and the bases are loaded. And Lemon's out and that's all for Davis. Lem not taking any chances. Making his second trip to the mound. The youngster noticeably upset. And now Fran Healy. And now 20 seconds for our local stations to identify themselves. Okay, the goose will come on in relief. Ron Davis. Davis, Major League debut. Having a case of the jitters, I'm sure. It happens to everybody, Scooter. Yeah, that is a shame. The kid was noticeably overthrowing. And you try to impress when you go out there. And yet Bob Lemon, when he went out, told the kid, look, you got a six-run lead. Get the ball over. Make them hit the ball. He walked the first man. Then trying to get the ball over to the second man, he got a base hit. And that got the kid kind of flustered. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But right now, there's a break in the action with the score of New York 7. Minnesota won. This is Mel Allen. You know, if pitchers like Hunter and Guidry and Lyle want to see someone with a really great delivery, they ought to pick up a phone and call Emery. By the way, not only is Emery's delivery great, they also make quick pickups, even on the telephone. Emery, the Air Force, and Air Freight. What? Okay, the goose on in relief as Bob Lemon. Walked slowly by home plate umpire Steve Palermo. Says a few words about the check swing. Now he heads for the dugout. Mike Keith, Rich Gossage, and Fred Stanley on the mound talking over the situation. There's nobody out. The top of the seventh. The Twins with the bases full. 
Of course, the goose has to do the job. And like Phil said, a beautiful day. A big crowd, old timers day. Phil, I get a big kick out of walking around the clubhouse, listening to you guys, the old timers, talk about the old days. It's like one story, Bob Lemon. I showed him a picture of you punching a ball off him, <laughs> beating the Cleveland Indians in a big game. And Liv got all excited about well, it. I figured you would. You're an agitator, Haley. <laughs> you know that? Well, I'm glad you did, because I like the kid Lemon, too. Oh, he was excellent. He, uh, Mantle was taking a look at the picture. Mickey said, do you see who's standing on deck? After yeah, wasn't that was jumping, Mickey? Jumping up and down, and that was his first year as a Yankee. Oh, he was excited. Just a youngster, 19 years old. He told Lem, think of it this way. You saved your ERA by Scooter Bunting. He said, I would have came up. I was the next year, hit a three-run over. <laughs> All right, good way of thinking. All right, Gossage now with his work cut out for him. Look who's up there. Rodney Carew. He's one for three. The base is loaded and takes a strike. Gossage, fine earned run average, 2.16. One six, lost nine. Making his 41st appearance of the year, he has 14 saves. The pitch, check swing, foul, rifles back into the crowd. How do you like that little kid caught that ball? Unbelievable. It hit him right in the stomach. He's shaking up a little bit, but he's holding the ball up high, and he's all right. Got a Yankee hat on, and now a souvenir from Rod Carew. The two-strike pitch. Bouncer just foul. I said it got as much be tough to see right now, Fran Healy, oh, with those shadows. Without a doubt. And, of course, psychologically, the twins have to face them. They have to go up there, and they realize it before they leave the dugout. The shadows and gossip. Very yep. tough. Combination. A two-strike pitch low. Nice play by Heath. The ball and two strikes. Carew batting 336. Had a rough year against Yankee pitching this year. A 1-2 delivery outside, 2-2. Two and two. It's a club you cannot relax against, the Twins. Came into this game with a 278 team batting average. The 2-2 two -two pitch, ground ball to second. Randolph goes to Stanley 1, back to first, not in time. A run scores. The runner is out at second, and Stanley is down. He got hit after he released the throw to first base. Smalley's sliding in, and Stanley gets up, limping a little bit. An RBI for Rod Carew. It's Yankees 7, Twins 2. Now one out and runners at first and third. Phil Smalley showed me something there, breaking up that double play. Yep. He has to go out, play shortstop, and the Yankees have a shot at him. And the lights go on. In the radio booth. All right. <laughs> One run scores. That run is charged to Ron Davis. The batter now, Mike Cubbage. Bounced to second twice and walked. Pitch to Cubbage. Ground ball is short. Stanley to Randolph One. Back to first. Low strap by Chambliss and a run scores. Now, I don't know whether that throw was in the dirt or not. It's a fourth play. Six to four. There'll be no error on the play. A big break for the Twins. An RBI for Cubbage as Powell scores, and it's now the Yankees 7, the Twins 3. And that run is charged to Ron Davis. Two men are out. And the batter, Rich Childs, he's 0 for 3. Fly to left, bounce to second, and bounce to short. Pitch by Gossage, strike one call. So Goose has done his job. He's thrown a couple of double play ground balls that the Yankees just missed turning over. He sets, and the pitch is hit in the air to center field. Mickey Rivers to his left. He's there now and makes the catch. But the Twins pick up two runs on just one base hit. No errors and a man left. And at the end of six and a half, it's the Yankees seven and the Twins three. just another cheering fan be an expert you can be totally informed on the world of sports when you read the sports page
pages of the Times Union and the Knickerbocker News. We bring you complete coverage of Major League Baseball with special emphasis on the Yankees, Nets, and the Red Sox. We also keep a watchful eye on the local high school and college scene. Our reporters specialize in news of your favorite sports. Nationally syndicated columnists like Mickey Charles, Dick Young, and Jimmy the Greek add another dimension of expertise. You'll get analysis, projections, personalities, predictions, scores, and statistics. Everything you need to rise above the crowd. Be an expert with the sports pages of the Times Union and the Knickerbocker News. For home delivery, call 454-5454. Rutland Lumber is your true test lawn and garden center. You'll find low prices on quality lawn and garden tools. They carry a complete inventory including lawn rakes, garden rakes, garden hose, shovels, hoses and nozzles, flower and vegetable seeds, pruning shears, lawn sprinklers, spading forks, axes, chainsaws and hedge trimmers, just to name a few. Rutland Lumber is open weeknights till 8.30, Saturday till 4.30 p.m. and Sunday from 10 to 4. That's Rutland Lumber, 1997 Central Avenue in Colony. Okay, the score here in Yankee Stadium, Yankee 7, the Twins 3. Big crowd, old timers day. Mike Keith, catcher for the New York Yankees, will step in. He'll be followed by Fred Stanley and Mickey Rivers. Okay, a right-hander in relief of Holly will be John Sutton. Sutton number 40. Again? Number four, at number 40, all over the place. Of course, they have the Minnesota Twins, red, white, and blue uniform. Yep. Yankees with the pinstripe. Hey, that was a beautiful traveling bag that uh, all us old timers received today. It's got dark blue on the outside, and when you open it, the Yankee pinstripes are in the middle. It's one of those traveling bags. Jeez. Hang your clothes. And really a beautiful bag. It's a big day. That old-timers day here. Big day in Yankee Stadium. And the Yankees originated it, too, and all the other clubs jumped on the bandwagon, and you can't blame them. It's successful all over. Of course, there's nothing like old-timers day at this ballpark. No. The house that Ruth built. All right. Sutton pitching against Mike Heath, and it's over for a strike. Quite a contrast now. Holly was 6'5", 210. Sutton is just 5'11", 185. And over Heath's head. He had to duck down. It's one on one. It'll be Heath, Stanley, and Rivers here in the bottom of the seventh. The Yankees lead 7-3. There's strike two call. Kind of a quick pitch that Sutton has out there. And just outside with a good slider, two and two. Still, the way to stop a quick pitch is when the batter steps into the batter's box. Look back at the catcher. The catcher will not give the sign until you turn your head and look at the pitcher. Yeah, but suppose he quick pitches while you're looking at the catcher. Broken back grounder right back to Sutton, and he throws him out, one out. Well, the problem there is the catcher will not know what's coming because he has to give the sign. So if he wants to quick pitch the catcher... Everybody's in trouble. The umpire, the catcher, yeah, the batter. Yeah, I'll say. All right, Fred Stanley's had a good day. Beautiful bunt single to drive in a run in the second inning. It was a squeeze play. Single to left center and scored in the fourth and walked in the fifth. Stanley takes a strike. Chicken batting 231. One man out, nobody on. And a bouncing ball is short. Smalley deep. That was a wicked hop. He's up. Good arm and throws him out easily. That was not an easy chance by Smalley. Two men are out. And the batter, Mickey Rivers. Mickey has struck out, doubled, singled, and popped a short. He's driven in a run and scored a run. Yeah, we mentioned Pete Rose continues his hitting streak. Unbelievable. And Joe, and Joe DiMaggio is here today, and everybody was asking him, what do you think? Is Pete Rose beating your streak? 
And Joe gave the greatest answer. Records are made to be broken. He set a record that I thought nobody would ever get close to, but Rose is unbelievable. That's ball two to Rivers. And I'm sure the closer Rose gets, the higher he gets up for it every oh, day. Yeah. You know, he's the kind of guy that thrives on pressure. Right. And not many ball players like that. That's outside, three and nothing. I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, I'm surprised Rod Carew has not had one of those. Yeah, I can't believe it. With great a hitter as he is. Of course, they walk him a lot. They can pitch around him. There's a strike three and one. Of course, he can bunt so well also. Like Rose. Rose has gotten many base hits during this streak last time at bat with a bunt. Right. And, of course, he's a switch hitter to Rose to his uh, benefit. Bounce it at first base. It kicks foul. And Gene Michael boots it. <laughs> Those old shortstop. <laughs> I tell you, my reflexes are just about gone. I don't yeah. think I'm going to play anymore. I, I, know, I noticed that. Bobby Thompson. <laughs> I figured you would. But Thompson's ground ball, I should have had. Oh, that ball's in, in the hole. Yeah, but I mean, in the old days, I'd have gobbled that up, thrown a third. I could never reach first and let the third <laughs> baseman throw him out. <laughs> Bounce it a second. Nice hop to Will Fong. Throws him out. The Yankees get down in order. And now at the end of seven, it's the Yankees seven and the Twins three. The day is done. Coming home. It's time to let it go. It's the moment to unwind. Welcome home. So just say, And pour the king of beers and sail back. And please yourself. For when you say, the Bush St. Louis. There are two things I remember about 58. I spent more on oil for my hair than on oil for my car. And I bought my first shaving. You can buy a better product in Champion. It's also the year I started using Champions. Now in 66, I remember two more things. A silver Corvette and a redhead named Georgette. No matter where you are, it's Champion. This year I got myself a Chevy wagon. And four more things to remember. Billy Jean, Billy Joe, Billy Jean, and Billy Bob. I've had a lot of different kinds of Chevys over the years, but one kind of spark plug, Champion. You can't buy a better plug for any kind of car than Champion. Champion. You can't buy a better plug no matter where you are than Champion. Forget someone? Did I forget Billy Jack? Top of the eighth. Score Yankees seven to Twins three. The Goose will face Glenn Adams. Phil? All right, Adams has bounced the second single to left and bounced to first. And he takes the strike from Gossett. Well, we've got a young man, Perry Mayo who is not feeling too well. We send him our best wishes from Ridgefield Park. Also, uh, Sal Evars, who uh, got a base hit in the old-timers game, asked me to send his regards to his mom, Lena Evars, who's in the hospital up in Westchester recuperating. Check swing foul, and we'll pause five seconds for station identification on the New York Yankee Radio Network. You're listening to 1460 WOKO, Albany. All right, we're in the top of the eighth. The Yankees leading 7-3. to three. Drive to right field. Reggie Jackson moves in a couple of steps. Makes the catch, and there's one away. I tell you, more and more, Fran Healy, Reggie Jackson is winning the crowd back again. And he said he had to do it with his bat, and he's doing it. Also with his arm. What a throw he made earlier in the ballgame. Great throw. And cut down Roy Smalley. Perfect throw to second or the shortstop, Fred Stanley. You know, Smalley was so surprised he pounded his fist into his palm of his hand he couldn't believe it. Mm. Of course, anytime you hit a ball off the wall, you figure it's a double. Right. Yeah, deep and right, that's a long throw. Willie Norwood up there now has singles still in the base, robbed of an extra base hit on a great play by Thomason in line to second. He fouls this one back out of play. It's one and one. Norwood is the culprit who hit that hanging slider by Sparky Lyle over the right center field fence. 
Nobody thought it was going out of the park. Markey said he was really surprised that it carried that far. And that was the clincher. Tough game for the Yankees to lose. Could have picked up a full game on the Red Sox. He swung, did not check it. It's a ball and two strikes. And Sparky up in the bullpen once again. One out, nobody on. Seven to three, the Yankees lead. Top of the eighth. Gossage curve, check, swing, foul. And Gossage is really rough to see out there now. Whenever you see a lot of check swings, you know it's tough to pick the ball up. The goose winds, and it's low and outside, evens the count at two and two. This ball game did not start till 3.05. The 2-2 pitch, sidearm curve, low and outside, 3-2. and two. A lot of the old timers, when they were introduced, took them almost three minutes to run out to the infield. <laughs> Some of them a little bit out of shape. The payoff pitch, foul, back and out of play. Over the Yankee dugout, into the lower deck. Phil, I didn't realize that uh, Jerry Coleman and Bobby Brown missed those five world championship seasons because of military service. Obviously, you didn't realize it either. <laughs> no, I, I knew Jerry missed some of them, but they didn't miss them all, Fran. Well, they have their right on the program. Wait a minute. Three and two bounce foul. They missed being in all five of them, but they were there for parts of some oh, of them. Because, okay. Uh, no. Jerry was in the Second World War and then came came out and then went in the mm -hmm. Korean War. Right. Ball four, and Norwood gets the base on ball. So if you want to reread that thing again... Wow, geez, that really surprised me when I... The picture's there. I felt bad. Now I feel pretty good. All right. Rob Wilfong, single, reached on an arrow, bounced to second. Pops one up. It's playable by Nettles in foul territory. Makes the catch by the coaching box. Few men are out. I tell you, fellas like Jerry Coleman, Ted Williams, served two hitches in the Second World War and the Korean War. And Bob Fella missed more time than I think any other active player. He went in when the war first started. And stayed, I think, almost five years. And that was right at the prime of his career. Mm. He and Williams and Coleman, right in the prime of their career. They'd have broken all records, I believe. Gossage pitch, strike one to Butch Weiniger. Weiniger's been about twice and walked, both times. Two out. Yanks lead seven to three in the top of the eighth. Check swing, and it's outside one and one. Of course, both Williams and Coleman stayed in the reserve. There goes the runner. What a jump. He's through. Not in time, and he's in with a stolen base. I tell you, four runs behind showed a little daring do there as Norwood steals the base. His sixth, second stolen base of the ball game. And he was almost cut down. If he throw was on the money, they'd have had him. That would have been a little embarrassing. Of course, a good time to steal. Gossage, not even thinking. Right, of Norwood. All right, that may make the goose a little madder now. One ball, two strikes. Curve foul just below it. Still one ball, two strikes. Outfield deep on Weiniger. Gossage to the belt. His pitch fouled again back on the screen and out of play. Well, Steve Palermo walked by me in the dugout. I was sitting down there waiting to be introduced and didn't even recognize him out of uniform. Young, good-looking guy. Sharp, clothes. You see the pants he had on? Fly ball to left field. <laughs> Gary Thomas, and I'll tell you about it next inning. Makes the catch, and the inning is over. 
Nothing across. The man left at the end of seven and a half. The Yankees seven and the Twins three. You're not the only one who lives through rugged weather. Your driveway does too. Only while you're protected, it's out there exposed every day of the year. In winter, water freezes, expands, and tears your driveway apart. Summer sun bakes it. Oil and gas eat it. To protect your driveway, keep it jet black and rich looking. Pour on Genite J16. Sure, driveway sealers all look the same in the pail, but they don't last the same on your driveway. Genite's the one that's engineered tough for heavy industrial use. And tough is what you need to protect your expensive driveway. Don't take a risk with an ordinary sealer. Insist on Genite J16. Don't risk your driveway on second best. Get genuine Genite J16, the number one driveway sealer in the world. Genite J16, first because it lasts. Hey, what you need? travel without Lysol disinfectant spray. Spray it on public restroom surfaces to kill germs other people leave behind. Spray away the musty smell of motel rooms and spray air conditioner intake vents. Spray shower floors to kill athletes' foot fungus. Don't travel without Lysol spray. Yeah, what you need is Lysol spray in the good old summertime. Four weeks from today, Saturday, August 26th, is picture album night at Yankee Stadium. Every fan who comes out to see the Yankees take on the Oakland A's that night will get a free Yankee picture album containing 27 full color, ready to frame pictures of all the Yankee players and coaches. Phil? All right, friend. Willie Randolph is one for two. He has singled, walked twice, stolen a base, scored twice, and driven in a run. Lines one to right field, curves foul deep in the corner. Oh, getting back to Steve Palermo's attire. Okay. Hit on a beautiful pair of white cotton slacks mm -hmm. with the rope belt, that new style, like a navy rope, tied a square knot in it, let the ends hang down. Beautiful blue jacket, blue shirt. Good-looking young umpire. You endorsed him. Well, he's Italian, too. He's oh, he's sure. Goes well. Well, goes well. One ball, two balls, and one strike. And you've heard that right here from the resident fashion editor of the New York Yankees, <laughs> the Scooter. The 2-1 delivery is fouled upstairs and out of play, the right side. You know, I like, like you are tall, built well to wear clothes well. Small people, it's really tough. To look good in clothes. You really got to work at it. Really? I mean it. <laughs> I like your hat with the bubble gum on top. <laughs> that I always wore well, a Yankee hat. But the only thing I look good in. Check swing ground to pass the pitcher. The second baseman will fong up over the first one out. Willie was trying to get out of the way of the pitch. And it hit the bat. They're going to give the pitcher an assist, even though he never touched it. <laughs> one, four, three, says Dick Young. And Thurman Munson steps up. Munson is single, walked, doubled, and struck out. Thurman at 299 needs a base hit to get over 300. John Sutton on the mound. And a strike on the outside corner. I'll tell you something very interesting. You might have talked about it earlier. Curve is inside. Dale Barra has been called up by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yogi wanted to make sure that I read this on the air today. <laughs> and speaking of the name of Sutton, the youngster is going to break in against Don Sutton mm. of the Dodgers. Now, there's a man with a pretty good breaking pitch, sometimes illegal. <laughs> well, he's already been thrown out of a game for roughing up a baseball. No, he takes a bite out of it a lot, but they were all messed up. But anyway, Dale Burr has been called up from Columbus of the International League. It'll be in time for tonight's game at Los Angeles. He couldn't wait to call his dad Yogi, and Yogi couldn't wait to give this to me. <laughs> Dale is just 21, batting 280 after 99 games with 18 homers and 63 ribbies. 
So we'll all be looking anxiously at that scoreboard out in Los Angeles. Meanwhile, Munson has a full count on him. Three and two, one out. Nobody on. Yanks lead seven to three in the bottom of the eighth. And he bounces one knocked down by Sutton. Picks it up. Throws to first, and they got him. So there are two away. And now Gary Thomason. Thomason's 0 for 3. Bounce to second. Struck out. Fly to center. That's quite a thrill. I remember when Dale was called up last year, Yogi was very excited. But unfortunately, in about the second or third game that Dale played, he got hit on the thumb with a bad hop ground ball and had to be taken out of the lineup. Then he couldn't grip the bat. Was eventually sent back to Columbus. But this time he might stick. They need some help. Ball won to Thomason. And Dale worked out with the Yankees couple years ago, and it looks like his forte will be his bat. Well, I didn't see him work out, but you know what they're going to try him at? Shortstop. Ooh, tough position. Yeah, oh, I'm glad you said that. Bounce to the first. Oh, <laughs> backhanded by Carew. He steps on the bag, and that's it. The Yankees get down in order in the bottom of the eighth, and at the end of eight full innings, the Yankees seven and the Twins three. Where the roads unwind with traveling with friends with family here thinks he's more famous than Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson? Frank, Reggie scored 10 runs in one World Series. Five of them were homers. He set nine new records. He's even got a great new candy bar named after him. And boy, are those Reggie bars delicious. Crunchy peanuts, chewy caramel, a smooth chocolatey coating. Okay, so the new Reggie bar is terrific. But I've got a whole sandwich named after me. You do, Frank? Sure. Haven't you ever heard of a bright birder? Right on, Frank. We always knew you were a hot dog. Okay, top of the ninth. The Yankees, seven. The Twins, three. Gossage will face Hoskin Powell. Powell is two for four. He's singled in the first. Slide to left. Pop to the shortstop and singled to right. All right. Hoskin Powell. He's a line drive top hitter. Not too much power, and Gossage pitch bounce one hop at a Chambliss. He steps on the bag, one out. <laughs> Remember, the Red Sox have won. Milwaukee has lost their ball game, so the Yankees got a chance to pick up a game on the Brewers. Brewers and Baltimore both ahead of the Yankees at this point, along with the Red Sox. Roy Smalley, single twice, fly to left and walk. He hits one deep to right, but curving foul. Man, that ball was in on him, and he got around on it. That weightlifting program must really be helping him to get around on Gossage fastball like that. Switch hitting shortstop. Takes it high, one-on-one. Smalley has 11 home runs on the air. Strike on the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. Good. Here's some more finals. Detroit 9, Seattle 1, Chicago 6, Texas 2. All right. Curve over the plate, but low. 2-2. Two and two. Well, Texas has started to win some ball games. They got a long way to go to catch that Kansas City. High ball 3, 3-2. Three The payoff pitch. Struck him out. Big strikeout for Gossage. That's his first strikeout since coming on in the ballgame. Two men out. Nobody on. And now Rod Carew. 
Rod is one for four. He's singled in the fifth inning. He slides to center, hits to the box, and bounces to second. And Carew takes a pitch high and outside, ball one. The wind up in the pitch, bounce to short. Stanley up on a hard ground ball, throws him out, and the ball game is over. The final score, the Yankees, seven and the Twins, three. Say, what's another name for action, Bill? Oh, that's easy, Frank. You who? Right. You who chocolate drink. And you who keeps your action up. And it's got a super chocolate taste. Rich chocolatey chocolate. Great frosty refreshment. Best of all, you who's made with nourishing low fat milk. Ordinary soft drinks are made with water. You who adds milk. And that's what makes you who better. Like Yogi says, if you like chocolate, you're going to love you who. Try you who chocolate drink from Iroquois brand. You who. The action drink for action people. Rico Home Center presents another episode of Under One Roof. Fred, do you know the paint in this house is 10 years old today? Happy birthday, dear paint. Happy and this birthday. furniture, it's early orange crate. I prefer to call it fruit of the limb. Well, as far as I'm concerned, Fred, you're at the end of your limb, and I'm sewing fast. <laughs> Can I help it if I march to the beat of a different drummer? I'll give you a different drum beat if you don't go to Rick or Home Center. They've got all the furniture and paint you need. Now save from three to four dollars on every gallon of Rickle Alcott floor and deck enamel, latex flat wall paint, or latex semi gloss wall and woodwork enamel. Choose from many decorated colors and nine yellow and white. Stop in now through Wednesday and save. Well, is there anything else I need to brighten up this place? Yeah, a new personality. Rickle help you do it better. Do it better with Rickle. Visit a Rickle Home Center near you for quality, value, and great selection. Rickle has it all. All right, here in Yankee Stadium, the final score, the Yankees 7, the Twins 3. The Yankees with 13 hits and one error. The Twins 3 runs on 8 hits and no errors. The Yankees scored two runs in the first, two in the second, two in the fourth, and one in the sixth. Darrell Jackson, the left-hander for the Minnesota Twins, absorbed the loss. He's three and four on the year. And Kenny Clay, young right-hander with the New York Yankees, under the tutelage of Clyde King, picks up the victory. He's two and three on the year. Rich Gossage gets a save. He leads the American League in saves with 15. But once again, the score of the Yankees, seven. The Twins, three here. Old Timers Day and a beautiful day for baseball. The engineer for Yankee broadcast is Brian Ferguson. Assistant producer is Carol Lee Ashwell. And the executive producer is Arthur Adler. Today's game was produced by Pam Boucher. This is Fran Neely along with Phil Rizzuto, Frank Messer, and Bill White. Our next broadcast is tomorrow at 1 p.m. against the Minnesota Twins. Now stay tuned for the Yankee scoreboard and wrap-up show. New York Yankee Baseball on 1460 WOKO Albany has been sponsored by Budweiser Beer, Champion Spark Lugs, Colonial Provisions, Makers of Yankee Franks, AC Delco, Emory Air Freight, Wendy's Hot and Juicy Hamburgers, Coho's Tobacco Company, and Big Dom Submarines. Stay tuned now for the Yankee scoreboard and wrap-up shows. Chevy Bars, hungry for a fresh new slice of apple pie? You'll eat them up at Marsh Hallman Chevrolet. Marsh Hallman's prices, that is. Prices starting as low as only $78 over cost on brand new Chevy Malibu, Nova, Monte Carlo, Caprice Classic, tough Chevy trucks, and versatile Chevy wagons in sizes to fit any family's budget. Join the bandwagon. Make your next deal your best deal. Marsh Hallman is anxious to trade, and that means high traded allowances, low monthly payments, even 48 months. Buy now and benefit from Marsh Hallman's most gigantic sale in history. Entire inventory, new and used, must be sold to make room for the 79s. Come on in. Marsh Hallman Chevrolet, area's big volume Chevy dealer. Central Avenue, corner Everett Road, Albany. Open daily till 9, Friday till 6. Open all day Saturday.
Yankee Scoreboard Show is sponsored by Getty Gasoline. And now here with the Scoreboard Show, Pam Boucher. Thank you, Fran. Taking a look first at the American League, as you probably heard this afternoon, the Boston Red Sox defeated Kansas City one to nothing. Jim Wright went the distance for the win for Boston, tossing a six-hit shutout. Dennis Leonard gave up only four hits, but that one run, and he took the loss. He's now 12 and 12. Wright is six and two. Milwaukee lost this afternoon, dropping them to five and a half games behind the Red Sox. Toronto defeated them four to three. May had a home run for Milwaukee in that game, his second of the year in the eighth inning with nobody on. John Mayberry had his 16th in the second inning with nobody on for Toronto. Dave Lemanchik got the win. He's now 4-12. and 12. The losing pitcher was Larry Sorensen. He is 12-8. and eight. It was Detroit over Seattle, 9-1. to one. Detroit scored eight runs in the first three innings of that game. The winning pitcher was Young. He's now 2-1. and one. The losing pitcher, Rick Honeycutt, he is 4-6. and six. And it was the White Sox over the Rangers, 6-2 to two this afternoon. Al Oliver had his 10th home run in the 8th inning with a man on for Texas. George Orta had his 13th in the 1st with one man on for Chicago. The winning pitcher was Steve Stone, raising his record to 9-7. and seven. The losing pitcher, Fergie Jenkins, his record is now also 9-7. and seven. Tonight, Oakland will be at Cleveland and California will be at Baltimore. I'll have a look at the National League scores right after this. In 1969, Jackie Stewart won his first World Racing Drivers Championship. He repeated in 1971, then again in 1973. What Jackie Stewart doesn't know about cars hasn't been written. I do know that cars just don't perform the way they used to. One of the reasons is the unleaded gasoline that the new engines call for. Unfortunately, most unleaded don't have the power that gasoline used to have. Well, Katie Unleaded Regular does. It delivers the kind of power you got from gasoline before they took the lead out. Getty Unleaded Regular actually delivers more power than most other major unleaded. As an ex-racing driver, that appeals to me. And while Getty Unleaded Regular delivers more power, it costs less than most other major unleaded. I don't know how Getty does it. But as a Scotsman, that really appeals to me. Getty Unleaded Regular. More power for less money. In the National League this afternoon, the Cincinnati Reds downed the Philadelphia Phillies 6-2. Pete Rose singled in the first inning to extend his consecutive game hitting streak to 42 games. George Foster had his 24th home run of the year in the first inning with one man on. And Paul Moscow had his first in the second with two men on. Moscow picked up the win in that game. He is now 2-2. Two and two. Jim Ronborg was the loser, dropping his record to 7-9. and nine. They had a crowd of almost 50,000 people at Riverfront Stadium for that game. Out in San Francisco, the Giants scored two runs in the bottom of the sixth for a 2 to nothing lead over Chicago. But Bobby Mercer has homered a solo shot for the Cubs in the top of the seventh. The Cubs are still batting, so it's now San Francisco 2, Chicago 1 in the top of the seventh. John Montefusco started for the Giants. Gary Lavelle has come on in relief. Mike Krukow is on the mound for the Cubs. All the other action in the National League is tonight. It will be Montreal at Atlanta, Pittsburgh at Los Angeles, where Dale Barrow will be playing for the Pirates, and St. Louis at San Diego. The Mets and Astros have an unusual Saturday day off. Here at the stadium, the Yankees defeated the Twins 7-3 in the Old Timers Day game. Frank Messer will have all the details on that game for you next on the Yankee Wrap-Up Show. The Yankee Scoreboard Show has been sponsored by Getty Gasoline. And now the Yankee Wrap-Up Show on 1460 WOKO, sponsored by Magnavox. The Yankee Wrap-Up Show is sponsored by the Lincoln Savings Bank and by Magnavox. Well, good afternoon again, everybody. Frank Musser on the Yankee Wrap-Up Show from Yankee Stadium on a very eventful old-timers day. So many things happened this afternoon. It's hard to know what to talk about first, so let's uh, do the logical thing and talk about the baseball game. The Yankees defeated the Minnesota Twins 7-3. The Yankees had seven runs on 13 base hits. They committed one error. 
the Minnesota Twins, three runs, eight hits, and no errors. Kenny Clay pitched six strong innings for the Yankees and picked up the win. His record now two wins and uh, three losses. Goose Gossage came on to get his 15th save of the year, and Gossage leads the American League in saves. The losing pitcher was the twin starter, left-hander Daryl Jackson. His record is three and four. I'll be back with more on the ball game and the other events of the day in just a moment. Are you thinking about getting that color portable you've always wanted? Well, take a look at Magnavox and the full lineup of Magnavox color portables. They come in 13-inch, 15-inch, and 19-inch models measured diagonally. And they're in a wide variety of great-looking styles and finishes. Take a good look at the Magnavox Star System Touch Tune Color TV, the first computer TV ever. It's loaded with great features, like a picture that's always sharp, always natural, always perfectly tuned, as only a computer can assure. The channel number you're tuned to even appears on the screen. There's also the Magnavox Videomatic Color Portable Television with the precision of a digital computer and the ease of a push-button telephone. You'll have direct, instant channel selection and no more clunk-clunking through the channels in between, all with just a push of a button. There's even a Magnavox Color Portable with an Odyssey home video game built right in, so you can play whatever computer game you want, whenever you want to play it. And that's a Magnavox exclusive. That's color portable television with the Magnavox Touch. Stop by your Magnavox dealer today and see all the great new Magnavox color portables. There's sure to be one that's right for you. Well, everything started here at Yankee Stadium with the Old Timers Day ceremonies. And in the midst of the ceremonies, it was announced by the Yankees that Billy Martin would return to the New York Yankees for the remainder of this year and next year in an advisory capacity. And then in 1980, Billy Martin would again become field manager of the Yankees. Bob Levin, who was named to replace Martin earlier this week, will remain the Yankee manager through 1978 and 1979. For 1980, Bob Levin will become general manager of the Yankees with Billy Martin taking over again on the field. And at the same time, it was announced that Yankee President Al Rosen's contract had been extended five years. The current general manager of the Yankees, Cedric Thomas, will remain in that capacity through 1979, at which time he will become vice president of the Yankees in charge of scouting and will operate those duties from his home in Kansas City. So with all that news, the old-timers introduced the Yankees celebrating the 32nd annual old-timers day. The Yankees went out and beat the Twins 7-3. to three. The Yankees got two runs in the first inning after the Twins had scored once in the top half of the first. The Yankees came back with two runs. Lou Pinello, who started the ball game, came to bat only once, drove in a run, as did Chris Chavlis. Later in the inning, Pinello tried to steal home and was thrown out in a heavy collision with catcher Glenn Borkman, both men, eventually left the ball game early on quite a tangle at home plate. The Yankees got two more runs to ice the ball game in the second. RBIs this afternoon, seven men batted in single runs apiece. Mickey Rivers, Willie Randolph, Thurman Munson, Lou Pinella, Chris Chambliss, Reggie Jackson, and Fred Stanley. Stanley got his RBI on a perfectly placed suicide squeeze butt scoring medals from third base in the second inning. Stanley legged it out for a base hit, and the Yankees went on for a 7-3 to three win, and I'll have a final word in just one minute. Ever find yourself without any money when your car broke down and needed a tow? Or when you had to run out to a store and didn't have a dollar to your name? Times when neither a personal check nor a credit card would do? This is Carl Malden with an idea. When you come back from a trip, save your last American Express traveler's check. Stick it in your wallet and leave it there. Now you have emergency money. You can use it whenever you need it, or just leave it in your wallet indefinitely. It never expires. And of course, an American Express traveler's check is safe money. If you should lose it, you can get a full refund. And that's a lot better than losing cash. It's a nice idea for everyone in the family to have an American Express traveler's check just for security. And it's especially nice for a son or a daughter going away to college. So remember, the next time you come back from a trip, Save your last American Express Traveler's check. 
Someday it could save you. Next time you go on a trip, pick up American Express Traveler's Checks. And remember to save your last one. Someday it could save you. Well, for our Magnavox Star of the Game Awards this afternoon, I'd like two people. Kenny Clay, for one, for pitching six strong innings when the Yankees sorely needed a strong effort from a starting pitcher. Kenny Clay got the win. He pitched six innings, allowed only one run on seven base hits. So I'll name Kenny Clay for one, and I'm going to look for a hustling play in the second inning for our other star of the game, Greg Nettles, going from first to third on a ground out by Mike Heath. And then coming in a score on the suicide squeeze bunt by Fred Stanley. So we're going to give the award this afternoon to Ken Clay and Greg Nettles. Let them share it. Greg had two hits in the ball game. Looks like he's got his batting eye continuing. And that's just about the story from Old Timers Day here at Yankee Stadium. Again, uh, we'll tell you that Billy Martin is back with the Yankees in an advisory capacity for the rest of this year. Next year, 1980, he'll return as field manager of the Yankees with Bob Lemon at that time in 1980 becoming Yankee general manager. The Yankees and the Twins in a doubleheader tomorrow afternoon starting at 1 o'clock. Ron Guidry and Jim Beatty will pitch for the Yankees. Dave Gold and Roger Erickson are the nominees for the Twins. We'll have the pregame show for you tomorrow at 12.45, the ball game at 1 o'clock. Until then, this is Frank Musser saying so long on Old Timers Day from Yankee Stadium in New York. The New York Yankee Wrap-Up Show has been sponsored by Magnavox. Go follow the action of the world champions all season long on the home of the Yankees in the Capital District, 1460 WOKO, Albany. You're listening to 1460 WOKO, Albany.